Anytime when I actually paste, I always request to paste the last segment because that is when you're most mentally and physically fatigued. And that is when you actually really need someone who actually be able to turn around and help you through. I wanna be in that spot. My name is Michael Lee. I'm originally from uh, Hong Kong and I'm now here in San Francisco. My first exposure of running was actually in high school. Uh, I ran track, but uh, never done any kind of endurance running until the better part of my adult life. A friend of mine was doing Louisville Ironman and he DNF'd. Realized that he did 17 hours and he DNF'd. Like, I'm intrigued, so that's how I actually got, in, uh, got into my first marathon training. I actually signed up through a program called Team and Training. Through that, uh, I was introduced to a mentoring system. They have professional coaches that actually teach you through how to get ready for your first marathon. It, it was both hard and exhilarating. Turn a corner and seeing that final finish arch was just, oh my God, I can do something harder than I thought I, I was able to. Right after I finished that marathon, I went back to the program and I said, I want to be a mentor. So I want to actually help other people experience what I experienced. My first 100, 100 mile race, I had six people carrying me. Having the people there was kind of more like a security blanket. I, and I see that very common when people doing their first big expeditions, they, they surround themselves with a ton of people, then the more must be better. But really, what, what you ran up having is too many cooks in the kitchen and, and having somebody who really know how to lead and how to have gone through that experience, they will be able to turn around and actually set you right in the right space, say the right thing to you at the right time. Um, and, and so that was what motivated me and, and also friends while I was training that it's their turn, they helped me and it's my turn to land a hand. But next to crossing the finish line myself, helping someone else through the finish line, was the next best thing. When I actually ran uh, my first 100 miles, one of my pacer, he went out a half a mile to film me coming in. I, I don't remember the finish myself, but seeing the video afterwards instantly transported me back to that moment in time. It helped me remember my first 100 miles, and it was very, very uh, special to me. And so you know, when I actually start crewing other people, I start doing that for them. Over time, I collected a, a, a catalog of, of these uh, footage of the last mile, which I dubbed since the final mile. Yeah! Dig deep, come on! This is it. This is it. The shoot us right here! Yeah! The uh, Schuylkill River Trail, also known as the SRT, it's, it's ideal for that Monday run. If anything's on your mind, let it loose and just enjoy these miles. A little Monday night therapy. It's been such a blessing to be able to just hang out with my friends and go for a run. It's more of a family than just the run crew. I'm not going to say that running is life, but running is a huge part of my life. Good morning, trail fans worldwide broadcasting here from Palisades, Tahoe. It is Sunday, the 26K here at the Broken Arrow Sky Race. My name is Dylan Bowman, joined by my friend and co-host, Corinne Malcolm. Corinne, good morning. How are you? Good morning. It's chilly out there this morning. The cars were frosted. Yeah. Hopefully those runners are staying warm before the 26K kicks off and just under 30 minutes. Yeah, evidently the summer solstice is around the corner, but this morning it feels like fall if not winter but it's a beautiful sunny crystal clear blue bird sky day here in california 
The 26K kicks off in 30 minutes here, and we will be joining you for the next three and a half hours for an amazing live stream broadcast coverage brought to you by Strava. A big thank you to Strava for making the live stream possible for the second year in a row. There is going to be dramatic racing. Corinne and I will remember six months ago when we were sitting in these chairs and we watched some incredible high octane racing here at the 26K. Corinne, what are your best memories from last year's race? I mean, I think we were shocked. We, you know, we had covered Western states. We had been together for UTMB, so we hadn't covered a race quite so short going into the VK and 26K in October. And I think we were floored with how exciting and how engaging it was and how engaged the the entire audience was. So it was just, I think we were floored by that. It was very, very cool to watch, you know, people duke it out for two hours. Yeah, it was incredible. And we remember Joe Gray and Darren Thomas, the top two men being in the finishing shoot together, barely, you know, a photo finish effectively in our sport. And as you said, fans being very engaged, it makes me think to say here at the front of our broadcast to make sure you get in the chat if you're watching us here on YouTube, on the Broken Arrow Sky Race YouTube channel. Corinne and I, like I said, we'll be here for three and a half hours. It's going to be awesome racing. We're going to cover both the front, the middle, and the back of the course of the race this year. So make sure you join us for all three and a half hours. Delay your own training, delay your own r long run. This is gonna get you highly motivated, highly inspired for your own training and racing. I guess we should also say happy Father's Day to our viewing audience here. I bet there's a bunch of fathers on the start line excited to enjoy a, a long day on the mountain. Corinne, let's maybe talk about uh, yesterday's race. Do a quick recap of the 52K. We did not broadcast that. We were here for the VK broadcast on Friday. So if you missed that, make sure you go back and watch the VK live stream that we did on Friday. But Corinne, give us a little recap of what happened yesterday. Yeah, the 52K was exciting. It also snowed and grappled on runners out there. It was chilly <laughs> in the village. It was chilly at the top of the mountain. And runners took on the 26K course effectively twice they did two laps out there so nice they did it twice as we like to say yep. and it was we had some exciting races we broke the the course record got broken in both the men's field and the women's field yesterday which was pretty cool to watch um some new names for a lot of folks some some not new names for other folks particularly because these athletes you know people love them they're from their own regions that kind of thing i think we start with the women's race um cause that's what i'm really excited about we yeah. were talking before we went live about how excited we are about the the young new talent on the north face team in jennifer lichter the 26 year old um spends most of her time in glacier montana but i know is training in mammoth yeah before this race has a fast marathon pr won the rut this past fall she broke ally max course record from last year she won by nine minutes um that's jennifer lichter in 455 so very very impressive running she looks dangerous coming yes. up in her career young 26 year old i happened to see them come through on their first lap yesterday she had a 10 minute lead very early in the race she held on to basically the same margin at the finish line so it wasn't that she grew her lead on the second lap but very very strong dominant racing performance in the women's race from Jennifer Lichter. Yeah, and she's followed by North Face teammate and the the funny runner herself, Brittany, Brittany Charbonneau. Charbonneau. Hilarious. Yes. Love that gal. Um, she ran her first 50 miler earlier this spring. Loves this distance, loves the marathon distance, was worried about the technicality out there, but clearly had a great run. About nine minutes behind Jennifer Lichter. And then a new name for me was Georgia Porter. Um, Flagstaff gal looks like she's a pretty fast marathoner looks like she got she's been doing some trails for the past year and a half or so it looks like based on ultra sign up anyway and ran her first ultra back in February so exciting to see some new talent some new faces coming into the field so again that was Georgia Porter Flagstaff gal in, in solidly in third yesterday yeah. it's so interesting we were talking on the elite men's panel yesterday about just how yeah there's so many just incredibly talented though to this point, anonymous runners in the sport right now, and they're all coming out of the woodwork. There's so much new competitive depth that's coming into the sport of trail running right now, and it's such an exciting time in the sport. Tell us what happened in the men's race. Yeah, men's race, also exciting. David Sinclair, who is from the East Coast originally, but lives in the Tahoe area, Nordic skier. I think we've been talking a lot about him this spring. Putting together a season, that Putting kid. together <laughs> a season. Um, he seems to run various distances very very well he was two minutes under seth ruling's course record from october 
in 424, so they were flying. Seth is not slow by any means, so to be under Seth's record on this course I think is pretty impressive. Um, just two minutes back behind him was Eric LaPuma, East Coast representing. I know he lived, he's lived out West in the past, but he currently resides out in Vermont. So really cool to see Eric LaPuma put on a solid show in second place. I'd love to see their Strava analysis, a comparison of their second laps, because I'm pretty sure LaPuma was well back on that first lap and made up a big margin on David Sinclair, the race winner. Uh, there on the on the second lap of the mountain, but awesome run representing the East Coast proudly here in a very mountainous high altitude running destination, that being Palisades Tahoe. So big shout out to Eric LaPuma for a proud second place finish and a really small margin of victory there by David Sinclair. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then not honestly not that far behind him was third was which was Jeff uh, Mogavero. I don't know a lot about Jeff. I know that you you had him in your picks though, right? I had him in my picks. I picked him to win. I he trains with Adam. Peterman. He's oh, a Missoula guy. really strong athlete. He's got a bunch of really good performances, including I think he's been on the podium at the 52K here in the past. Jeff Mogavero from Montana, really solid podium performance yesterday from him. But he does well in these kind of sky race, you know, high altitude, steep and technical type courses. So solid, solid podium performance from him too. Yeah, so solid podiums all around yesterday was really a very exciting race. I feel like the, the margins are a little bit more spread in the women's field yesterday, but the men's field was, I mean, at one point I was near the finishing shoot and I think we had the top five guys all kind of sitting there. So very, very cool to see. Um, I don't know. So just really good racing out there yesterday. Yeah. So eventually we're going to kick it down to Ethan Veniklaassen, who's going to be our on course start line correspondent. So we're going to uh, throw it down to him in just a little bit. But before we get to him, we've got a cool video that we want to show you here. So stick around. We'll be right back. Can you say I run fast? I, I run fast. <laughs> My name is Karen Smallcomb. I live in Reno, Nevada. My family is my husband, Chris, um, who really enjoys running, and my two kids, uh, Savannah and Carson. Savannah is six and a half, and Carson is four. When we found out the diagnosis with Savannah first, um, it was pretty heart-wrenching, um, and just we didn't know. You know, we considered and learned, met local people that have children with Down syndrome, and talked with them, and got a bit, you know, better understanding of what that, you know, would look like, and really learned at that point that yeah, things are going to be maybe more challenging. There may be more medical issues, but they're at the end of the day, they're also just kids. We want them to see positive environments to be involved in a, in a situation where people are challenging themselves of any ability and they're but they're getting it done and they're they're working hard and everybody's cheering each other on and is supporting each other and that's an environment that we really um, want them to be part of having you know special needs or down syndrome can sometimes be a little bit um, isolating and so that's one thing that i really want for them is to be part of a community and a very welcoming community and that's what i feel like the trail running has been seeing them last year at broken arrow um, finishing that um, it still brings tears to my eyes i watched that video and the finish and stuff and everybody cheering them on and just it, it was just the most heartfelt thing ever and just the emotion and being able to see and feel, really feel that community was just amazing. I'm getting emotional over the seeing them at the race start lines and finish lines and how excited they get um, to be around people of all abilities that are being welcomed and are challenging themselves and succeeding. And even when they're not succeeding, everybody's cheering each other on. And so for them to be part of that just makes it all worthwhile. Six months ago, nothing was there when I had my mammogram and it can happen to anyone. Saying out loud that I have breast cancer is a challenging thing and I still sometimes will kind of break down thinking about that. But one of the reasons I do put my story out there is that I want others to know and I really want people to check, get their uh, yearly checks and things done. You never think that it's gonna happen to you, but it can happen to anyone. And I just really want people to take care of themselves and take care of the people that they love because we have one life and 
live it to the fullest. Does anybody want that? Of course not. Are we ready to fight it? you damned right we are. And a lot of that's from the lessons we've learned in trail running. Yeah, when I kick its ass. <laughs> And welcome back. What a great story that is about Chris and Karen Smallcomb. Chris, of course, is going to be racing the 26K today. His kids celebrated Father's Day by doing their own kids race here at the Broken Arrow Sky Race yesterday. What an awesome phenomenon it is. It's a whole family experience here at the 2022 Broken Arrow Sky Race. We are just looking for a feed down to Ethan Veniklaassen, our on-course start line correspondent. So we're going to throw it to him just as soon as we have that feed queued up. It sounds like we've got him ready, so we're going to throw it to Ethan. And we are back here in the studio. Uh, again, my name is Dylan Bowman, joined by Corinne Malcolm. We are about 15 minutes away, more like 12 minutes away from the start of this year's 2022 Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K race. Again, last year was such an exciting race here at the 26K, probably the highlight of race week. So make sure you stick around. The race is going to start in 12 minutes, and then we can expect about a two-hour race little under for the men, a little bit over for the professional women. And uh, it's going to be an exciting day of racing here in Palisades Tahoe. Corinne, let's do a quick preview of today's race because it's going to be ex incredibly dramatic and exciting. We have some of the best athletes in the world here in Palisades Tahoe getting ready to tackle this course. I think first let's talk about the weather. We talked about it a little bit to start our broadcast. If we can share my screen, I think it would be interesting for the audience to see exactly what I'm looking at here in terms of today's weather in Palisades Tahoe. So if we can get a feed of that up on the big screen here, that would be great. It sounds like it is up. So if you can see my screen here, you'll see that the weather uh, current conditions here in the village are, is 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Luckily, the wind is not blowing so much down here in the village like it was yesterday and the day before. Still very chilly, but probably pretty nice running conditions. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's it's hard to hang out in it. It's hard to like be the spectators today, but yeah. it's, it's pretty comfortable running weather. And we get to sit in the studio and be spectators from here. And then you'll see up on the crest, 27 degrees Fahrenheit with a little bit of gustiness, 22 mile per hour winds up there on the mountain. So Corinne, let's talk a little bit about the course. Actually, I'll just change my display here and we'll look at Darren Thomas's winning victorious Strava file from this race in 2021. Corinne, what do you, th you, you know this course like yeah, the back of your I hand. Ran, You've run I some laps yeah. before. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, it's punchy out of the gun. You get going, right? You, the, the gun goes off and you've got a little bit of a tiny flat loop out of the village and then you're, it's straight uphill and it's straight uphill for quite a while. It rolls a tiny bit, but it's a gut punch to be heading uphill that fast with people. And in the, and that was in the 52 K. So the 26 K is going to go out even faster. So it can be, I don't know. I think it's just the, the wheels are going to either be there or they're not going to be there for these athletes. Yeah, absolutely. So if you could actually pull my screen up one more time, we can give a great visual of this Strava file from Darren Thomas. Again, he was actually second place last year. Again, he finished just behind Joe Gray in the 2021 version of this race, but you'll see, like Corinne said, fresh out of the gate, you have a little bit of rolling terrain, but you pretty much climb for a effectively the first eight miles of this course before a screaming fast downhill from the top of the mountain. And we were just commenting before we started broadcasting that Darren Thomas managed to throw down a 459 mile, which you'll see here on his Strava file there in the 10th mile of this race last year. Um, so there are, there is some fast running up there, but there is also a lot of technical mountainous running up on the mountain. Yep. There's definitely rocky sections. There's definitely cat track sections. There's definitely some fun, fast, rocky, windy single track. It's got a little bit of everything. Um, we should note last, there's always a little bit of a variation in the courses. Um, we will be on the same, uh, course as we were last year. We're not on our snow, like a snow course that we've been on in years past. So the, the runners today will be taking on the same course 
as the 26k was on last year same with the the course that that they were on yesterday so um should be comparable time wise and, and course records should be true course records based on that as well yeah absolutely and i think we could probably expect to these course records to at least be challenged again we have some of the best athletes in the u.s some of the best athletes in the world here duking it out corinne i think that's a great segue to start talking about the field who are you looking at Oh man, the list is long. Like Deep. picking picking my my five for the fantasy draft was <laughs> yeah. really hard, and I was like, "Oh, do I play favorites? What do I actually think is going to happen out there?" So, I'm gonna start with the men. We've got men doubling back from the VK that I think are really exciting. We've got Cam Smith and Eli Hemming, who are one two in the VK. I think they are they should be in a way clear favorites out there. But we've got people like Max King and Stephen Kirsch who did not race the VK, so they're coming in with fresh legs. Um, so which I, Joe Gray did in 2021, and it could have been the difference between he and Darren Thomas. Yes, because Darren did Two run the VK. Second margin of victory. Yeah. So, but then I've also highlighted people like David Sinclair will be running again today, so tripling. So we'll see how. That goes for oh, David. I didn't realize that. Yep. And then we've got people like Matt Lipsy from the East Coast, who I don't think had a good VK, but I think could be interesting here today if he's feeling a little bit better in the altitudes, feel, like feeling if he's got good downhill legs today could be huge. Um, but then I've also got um, VJ Jones, OCR athlete, but super talented OCR athlete, and I think he's got wheels. So I'm excited to see how VJ Jones does in this field. I also wanted to highlight Ryan Becker, who did not run the VK, I believe. He did. He, he was, did. I okay. think, sixth in the okay. VK. Okay, so yeah. doubling back again, but I think Ryan Becker could be a threat. I think Kiernan Nay could be a threat. I think Morgan Elliott, who had a super strong back half of the VK to finish third, could be a threat. So I, I think, think actually those are the Morgan, big ones. Yeah, Morgan Elliott, I think, probably is a better – 26k runner than a pure vk runner too, oh, i mean so. he's run he successfully run some hundreds at this point yeah. like the vk was very short i'm excited to see what he does in the 26k yeah, today very much so very much so and yeah like you said uh matt lipsy who our east coast viewers are bragging about proudly maybe he's going to try and pull in eric lapuma and uh make the east coast proud here in a high altitude mountainous west coast race so big shout out to the east coast contingent east coast trail runners a hardy hardy bunch testing themselves here on unfamiliar territory let's talk about the women's race yeah the women's race is also very exciting once again women doubling back from the vk but also women who um, will be on fresh legs today um like ashley brosman she did not run the VK. She did was just at GoPro Games, though, so a tune-up last weekend. Excited to see how Ashley runs. Wasn't she second at Way Too Cool this year behind MK? Yes. Yeah. Like, very talented athlete, and I think this is a good distance for her as well. I think she'll climb very well. I just don't know how, how the some of the descending will be for her. I yeah. think the, the fast descending will be very good for her, but I don't know how well she's at how well she d descends technical terrain. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of excited to see how that plays out. Um, Tabor Hemming had a great performance uh, along with Emma Cook Clark in the VK. They were Emma, Emma was second, Tabor was third. They're both doubling back today. I think that they are both threats in this race. Emma Cook Clark, the surprise of the VK broadcast, second place. Uh, coming out of nowhere, really, we got a tip just before the broadcast on Friday to look out for the Canadian Emma Cook Clark. She did not disappoint. So, really excited to see her double back here at the 26K. And then my pick, I think, for the women's win was Allie Mack. She yep. ran the VK. I don't know that anyone can hang with her climbing. Maybe Ashley can. And so I think if she can establish enough of a lead early in the women's race that she could possibly hang on for the win here. She didn't do the 52K like last year or like in, like in October. So I think Allie Mack, she was my, my pick for the win for this one. Incredible. Any more honorable mentions here before we throw it back to Ethan? Yeah, I think honorable mentions out there too. We've got Olivia Amber and Sarah Kyes coming back after the VK. And then we've got some interesting stories with some former really high level track athletes in Alicia Montano, Lauren Fleshman, and um, Renee Medivere. I think... All three of those women have various um, experiences in trail. Renee's actually been running quite a bit of it, and I'm I'm really excited to see all three of those women out here experiencing the trail world and, and giving it a good go. Me too. Me too. What a great storyline that's going to be to follow here. We are about five minutes away from the start time here at the Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K broadcasting from Palisades Tahoe. We are going to throw it to the start line. Ethan Venaclausen is down there chatting with hey, some athletes. Hey, this is Ethan coming to you from the start line here in, here in Olympic Valley. Uh, I'm here with Lindy Sexton. She's getting ready to run the 26K. It's a balmy 30 degrees out here. Lindy, this is your second time running Broken Arrow Sky Race. Why do you come back? The views. Fair point. What's your favorite part of the course? Uh, anything 
anything scarier or anything uh, what like, like what excites you the most here I actually love the start I love the um, the switchbacks I mean it's, it's, it's a gentle climb and then you get to the the big the big climb so it's my favorite part as you can see crowd is gathering behind us Lindy have a great race today Thank best you. of luck out there back to the studio We are back live in the studio. So good to hear from our start line as runners are getting ready to go out there. Yeah, we are just three minutes away from the start here now. So, Corinne, one of the things that I think is so interesting, we talked about kind of the people from the road and track lineage who are here, people like Lauren Fleshman, Alicia Montano, and, you know, obviously we talked about Eli Hemming coming from a triathlon background, Cam Smith coming from a ski mountaineering background. We've got VJ, the OCR athlete. This 26K distance really does bring out an interesting cohort of people from different races. What do you think about that? I just, I mean, I think a lot of us run trails as, as part of training for other sports, and it just seems like a logical leap to be able to take that competitive energy that you might have for OCR or skiing or biking or whatever it is and get to channel that in a new way. And I think a lot of athletes are getting the experience of that out there, including actually a woman we missed. Um, Sophia Lockley is a new Solomon athlete, y U of Utah skier, also um, Beijing 2022 Winter Olympian this year. Yeah. She will be running her first official trail race. Yeah, and Sam Hendry I mentioned, or we 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 sort of met on the VK broadcast on Friday. Another U of Utah skier. U, U of Utah skier. Your people, the Nordic people, are so strong here in the mountains as well. So really exciting dynamic to follow. It's so great here in trail running to have people coming from all different sports. We're going to throw it back to the start line where Ethan's going to talk to another athlete. Ethan again. I'm with Max King, past Broken Arrow Sky Race champion and yesterday, well, Friday's Iron Face Challenge champion. Max, you keep coming back to the Broken Arrow Sky Race. We're super grateful for that. What brings you back every year? I mean, it's this, it's the crowd, it's, it's Brendan, it's you, it's everybody that puts this race on. It's such a cool community feel. You guys really like envelop everybody in the sport and that's what I love about it. It's like you guys aren't, you know, uh, too big for your own good and like making it not not cool and it's just it's an awesome event. I love it. It just it wraps up everybody in the sport and everything good about the sport. So I don't have anything to add to add to that. I mean, like what what more could you ask for from an interview? Max, thank you so much. No good luck today. Have fun out there. Thanks. To all you guys, have a great time. Best of luck. Get it done. Back to you guys. And we are back here just moments away from the start of the 2022 Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K. Those runners looked a little cold there at the start line. Ethan talking to the all-time legend, Max King, the man in his 40s, won the Iron Face Challenge, the new race here at Broken Arrow on Friday. He keeps getting better. He's definitely going to be a factor in today's race. But yeah, people looked like they were shivering there under the arch here in the village in Palisades, Tahoe. What yeah, a great lo start line. Lots of gloves on the start line. We'll get that, that footage from the start line pulled up for everyone, hopefully here in just a sec, because these runners are going to erupt in the village off that start line and head quickly up that climb. It looks like we've got Ryan Becker on the start line there. You're right, Ryan DeBrace. Patty O'Leary in the blue, Ryan Becker, David Kilgore, Cam Smith, Max, Max King, King, Stephen Kirsch. I think that might be Sam. Oh, no, that's Andy we Wacker. we got women on the front line there, too. Off on that side, we got Allie Mack, I can see. We've got the Hemmings side by side there. we got there Sam Lewis. I miss Sam Lewis. She's a great on-athlete as well. Incredible. All right. This is going to be amazing. Again, we've got set about 750 runners from all over the country, probably a few international runners as well here on the start line of the 26K. That's Janelle Links as well up there next to Tabor. So she did Hemming. come. Yep. Janelle Links, the defending champion here at the 26K, one of the stories of the race here last year. They've got their watch. trip through the parking lot here at the ski resort before 
heading straight uphill for probably about the first eight miles of the course here, about two thirds of the race. They probably feel like they're going uphill the vast majority of the time. And we're going to have so many great visuals. We've got a great team of camera people out on the course, drone operators, a big shout out to the whole team. who's Andre's this. got his name on his back of his jersey. That's so helpful, Andre, <laughs> yes. and that neon, that neon colored shirt. Incre nice work. Incredible. So some of our race favorites here, hot out of the gates to an early there's Cam Start. Smith There's there. There's Cam Smith with this red ponytail there. Again, he was our VK champion on Friday, doubling back here to the 26K. Going to be very interesting to see how he does. Fun oh. fact on Cam Smith, uh, he doesn't own a sports watch. He, if, you, if we ever see his wrist there, that's got to be like a <laughs> gas station Timex going on there. Really, really interesting athlete Cam Smith is. From Rockford, Illinois, about as flat of a place as you can – be in the United States of America, went to college at Western States in Gunnison, Colorado, now makes his home in Crested Butte, a world-class ski mountaineering athlete who spends his summers doing some competitions in trail running shoes, and he is just a phenomenal young athlete. Can't wait to see what he does in his career. Again, winning that VK in an incredible battle with Eli Hemming on Friday. Yeah, and it looks like I just saw Kiernan Ney kind of slip up the left-hand side there, wanting to get into position early. We saw him as one of our – he ended up – I think holding on for like a fourth or fifth in the in the VK, kind of in, held on to the, in that top 10 position. But he was one of those guys in that, that first part of the race that really pushed the pace yep. along with Eli and Cam. So exciting to see what Kiernan can do here in the 26K. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to that point, Corinne, to see both in the men's and women's professional races There's what the Kirsch race strategy is. Yeah. Because obviously there are people in the field who would probably – classify themselves as better climbers cam smith being one of them you know does he go hot out of the gate to try and get a lead to the top of the mountain and try and hang on in the descent i think i saw emma Cook clark come past her screen ally mack and Tabor hemming all in that group i believe that woman's name is rachel she runs from merrill she actually kind of was a surprise finish in my mind in the in the vk finishing sixth saw david kilgore come through he's doing the triple Doing all three races this weekend. Again, he's was on our elite athlete panel yesterday. A great guy. Also manages the athlete team for on running. There's Ali Mack. Speaking of on running, our VK champion, one of our race favorites here, Ali Mack from Colorado Springs, Colorado, a phenomenal athlete. Yeah, and as we'll see how it plays out. I I don't know that any other woman out there can hang with her on the climbs. We'll see. And if that's the case, like how much, like how much of a lead does she need to build on that uphill to maintain it for the entire downhill based on how the women might be descending behind her? Such a good point. We see at the bottom of our screen here, we've got, of course, a beautiful aerial drone image here of these runners screaming up the hill. But at the bottom, you can see the course profile of the Broken Arrow 26K. So you'll see these first couple miles are going to be rolling. I guess that's a relative term. <laughs> Anything here is going to be fairly mountainous. But the first couple miles are going to be rolling before they really start to climb in earnest up to the top of the peak here in Palisades Tahoe. Yeah, and we have to give a shout out to the people that are operating our cameras out there. We've got runners with gimbals. You can see it in the shadow a little bit there with Allie. Um, we saw them in their pre-race briefing here this morning getting ready to go. We've got tons of volunteers out in the course providing this footage for you along with our drone operators. So I don't know. I just we need to give the biggest shout out to the volunteers that that are making all this happen behind the scenes. No doubt, no doubt. Corinne and I have the easy job here, sitting in comfortable chairs, drinking coffee, watching this on TV, and what a great new evolution this is in our sport to be able to have front row seats to people like Ali McLaughlin here screaming up the hill, making her way past some of these lead men as uh Yes, this new live streaming generation of the sport comes to fruition. Yep, and we'll be jumping around to cameras as we kind of lose lose um, cameras here and there as they kind of run out of service. There is, they after that initial climb, they kind of wiggle around in the woods back here before they really start to kind of pitch up again. Yep. And so um, they're kind of just out there for a little bit. It's very, very windy. It's very flowy actually through that section. So they'll be moving very fast, but we might lose coverage of some of our runners through that zone. So we will remind our viewers, if you're just joining us, even though it looks like a beautiful bluebird day here in Palisades Tahoe, it's 29 degrees. <laughs> 
It's cold, cold, cold. Summer has yet to start, or at least there's a brief hiatus before it starts in earnest again next week. But actually, these are probably pretty good running conditions for pushing full gas like these pro athletes will be doing over 26 kilometers. Yeah, I think it's got to be fairly ideal for most of the athletes out there. You know, they might be starting in gloves and arm warmers, but they're going to they're gonna be pulling those off um, throughout the course of the day. So. Yep. I think that it, these are ideal conditions. They're not going to be too hot out there, which can be the real kicker here. And here we are kind of in the back half of the field, it appears. See some of our recreational amateur athletes. It's not all about the pros today. They've got their poles out. They're out getting ready for an awesome trip around the ski resort here in Olympic Valley. Some of them have those jackets on again, going back to the temperature here. <laughs> Beautiful blue skies. The wind has died down. And here we are back with an incredible drone aerial shot here, looking down at our lead men screaming up the hill. We've got a little group here. This field is starting to string out. And just like in professional cycling, if you've ever watched the Tour de France, it's always on the climbs where the real separation happens. So again, going back to what we were saying earlier, there are people in this field that have different skill sets, right? Some people are better at climbing. Some people are better at descending. Some people are better on the flats. Some people are better on the technical stuff. So it's really fascinating to see who's the most well-rounded athlete and where they put their skills on display if the better climbers really try and get a lead here on the first climb. Yep. And just like on Friday and just like last year, we're going to rely a little bit on you all watching at home to help us identify your runners out there. Because while we know some of them and we know what some of them are wearing, we're going to miss other ones, and so we will definitely will be utilizing you in the chat on YouTube saying, hey, Morgan Elliott's in that green tank top. Yeah. Or, hey, don't. And what a great Janelle, shot Janelle this is. Janelle Link's in that gray shirt. Thank Looking you, guys. Looking down at the valley floor, you see in the upper left-hand side of our footage here, there's a few switchbacks as they cruise through these beautiful pine forests. And, again, these opening couple miles are really the fastest miles on the course or at least the most rolling, less steep, less technical. But the whole course is quite fast. Again, 26 kilometers. The course is actually really only about 14 miles. So we expect the lead men to finish in about one hour and 50, one hour and 51 minutes. Lead women about 214, 215. So stick around with us. We're going to be here for the next few hours bringing you the awesome action from today's race. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised to see these athletes creep under the those times from last year just being pushed so hard. I, I'm really curious to see what happens. Right. There's Ryan Becker coming through. There's your guy, Stephen Kirsch. Did you wear a pair of punch Arm sleeves, gloves on. That's a pretty flowy group of lead men. Interesting anecdote about Stephen Kirsch, who we're following here, Corinne's friend and teammate from Flagstaff, Arizona. He had a ticket back into the Western States 100 this year. He's a two-time top 10 finisher there. He opted to instead change it up, do some shorter distance races this year. And that's one of the things that I think is so exciting about the sport. There's so many different ways to challenge yourself. It's not all about doing a hundred miles. In fact, it's just as fun and often just as hard to rip out a nice 26 K here. I joke that sometimes the hardest race I do all year is like a 5k. Right. It hurts so bad. Cross country race. Or yep. something. Yeah. This is some awesome coverage here. Thank you so much to whoever's got that gimbal cruising behind our race leaders here in the early miles of the 26 K. Again, this is Steven Kirsch that we're following here in his Adidas Terex kit. Turn it around. There's Morgan, Morgan Elliott, and there's Andre. I know Kyle Lund's in a yellow shirt. We got a shout out for him in the chat. Yeah, so there's yeah, Max there's King. Max. So again, in the chat, if you can ID some of these runners, it's very helpful for Corinne and myself. We pride ourselves on being encyclopedic in our knowledge, but it is such an incredible moment in the sport where there's just so many new athletes coming in from different backgrounds with so much talent, so much ambition. Here's our man, Patty O'Leary, the Irishman from San Francisco here, leading one of these chase packs. But as I was saying, please do get in the chat. Let us know who you're cheering for. Yeah, look at all these exhalations of our runners cruising up the hill. The 
grass looks a little dewy and oh, frozen. Oh, it was frosty this morning <laughs> out there. But luckily, it seems that the temperature, the thermostat is going to be turned up starting like this afternoon and especially tomorrow and throughout next week. But what a beautiful, crisp mountain morning here in the Tahoe area. Yeah, this is, I mean, just like with the VK, it's hard to do it in 45 minutes. It's hard to, hard to do the VK in two and a half hours. Same goes for the 26K. Everyone that's got it, getting off that start line today and making the loop around the resort to finish, to finish and ring that bell, they're all incredible. Ring that bell. And again, a very happy Father's Day to our viewing audience. I hope this is a great way to celebrate watching some trail running action. I'm sure there's a lot of fathers in this today's field. I think this might be Logan Williams yep. here in the bucket hat. Yep, doubling back. Logan Logan lives in Tahoe. He was on the, your panel yesterday, attorney. He is a super interesting guy, and he just seems to – he really enjoys racing and racing a lot, and I really – I just get a huge kick out of hanging out with Logan. Terrific. So it sounds like we've got another one of our awesome stories from another athlete in the field. I think we're going to go ahead and cut to that now. My name is Nicole Nipper. I'm 27 years old from Minnesota. I started running in high school and competed in college and I found ultra trail running as a grad student. I gravitate towards deeper stories and I'm not great at small talk. There are a lot of people in the trail community that have been through dark times, that have had trauma in their lives um, in, in one way or another, dealt with anxiety or depression. And unfortunately, eating disorders are certainly prevalent throughout. From a very young age, I wondered if I would make it to 20. And I think that's that's carried throughout my life. Uh, even though I'm 27 now, there's still some of those really darker times where you question whether, whether you're gonna make it. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's really hard. I know I'm not the only one either. And, uh, that, that's when you really need other people to remind you uh, that you're loved no matter what. Coaches in my life have made the biggest difference, uh, particularly when I was growing up. I wanted to, in some ways, give back by being a coach and realizing how, how much responsibility there is in being a coach. That's that's probably the scariest part of it, is knowing how much influence you have over kids during really tough times in their lives. But recognizing the most important part in that pursuit is to be, just be there and be loving. Even if they're, they're things they don't want to talk about, uh, just being there and showing up, uh, that's what I wanted to do for them and I hope that creates a safe enough environment that if they are struggling or if they're celebrating something that they can bring all of that to, to me. It's such a hard time growing up and to have just another person to be in your corner to love and accept you, that's that's what I want to be and not just for the, the kids that I, I come into contact with with coaching but really everybody. What matters is doing our best every day and sometimes our best is just getting out of bed and that's, that's enough. Drone shot we are here. back here in studio with an awesome aerial drone shot here looking down on our lead athletes. What a great story from Nicole doing the Triple Crown here at the Broken Arrow Sky Race. Again, Corinne, maybe tell, remind people what the Triple Crown is just to see how impressive it is. It's super impressive. And she's out here by herself just do, just getting it done. Um, coming from Minnesota, I, I grew up in the Midwest. My mom lives in Minneapolis, so near a place near and dear to my heart. So the Triple Crown is going to be that VK on Friday, the 52K. 
yesterday and the 26K today. So I was joking with some Triple Crown athletes yesterday saying, well, you only have to do one lap today. That's not that bad. <laughs> Two down, one to go. And they are well on their way making progress. I was talking to both David Kilgore and Mario Mendoza, both elite athletes in the Triple Crown this weekend. I think Mario Mendoza is out to a lead in the Triple Crown competition. So it's an aggregate result based on your times in all three races as we look down here on our race leaders looks like a group of two has separated themselves just a little bit can't identify those runners quite yet but what an awesome shot that is looking straight down big thank you to our drone operators for making this shot possible oh i love the aerial footage of trees it makes me so happy that 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 those aerial shots like that getting to see the little runner wiggle along that single track there it's just I think that summarizes our sport in a big way. Totally. And just to reiterate something I've mentioned before, if you didn't see the VK, speaking of drone footage, after today's broadcast, go back and watch Friday's Vertical Kilometer. Some of the best trail running footage, some of the best race day broadcast live stream coverage that I've ever seen in my life. So make sure you go back and watch that battle between Cam Smith and Eli Hemming, that awesome performance from Ali McLaughlin. And uh, yeah, get excited for your own mountain adventures this summer. And here we are back with what appears to be the women's leader in today's 26K race. Corinne, can you identify this? I don't here? think we're with the women's leader right now. I'm pretty sure we're just in the, the middle of the pack, I think. We'd get confirm we'll get confirmation from our team, but I just think that we are in this kind of middle section before they hit that next climb. Yeah, I can't identify this runner here. We are confirmed this is the women's leader here in the 26K. We will get an ID on this runner. And again, if you are in the chat and know who this is, please do let us know. It's tough to tell. Rocking that Solomon pack, the long sleeve t-shirt. And we will see exactly who this is as soon as we can. Yeah, we'll get and we'll get more clearer shots of runners as they approach kind of the big aid station on, on that climb. Absolutely, but she looked like she was moving very, very well there, mixed in with some of the lead men. Here we are back with our drone. We start to see some moving dots, our lead men, and it does look like there is this group of two off to an early lead. Yeah, we've got a neon. It looks like we've got a neon green top and a red top, orange top. I like that that's the best description we can give you of those, yeah. of those two runners. If anyone knows what Eli's wearing today, Hit us up because I don't know if he's in his American, his American flag ball eagle like shirt rocking. or not. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it but looks clearly like... a group of two right now. I I'd imagine that third and fourth are not far behind based on, based on how tight the the field has been racing this weekend. Yeah, but it's going to be fascinating to see the strategy, right? Like, of course, some of these runners, like we said, do excel on the climb. So maybe this runner may, is a little self conscious about they're a little insecure about their descending prowess and wants to get out to a really hot start put pressure on the rest of the field to hold on on the massive downhill that they're ends moving. today's race but yeah they are absolutely cruising up this mountain here it's difficult to tell the pitch of this slope but suffice to say nothing here in palisades tahoe is flat so this terrain is definitely challenging and these guys are making quick work of it I think Kat Bradley is also in the Triple Crown, which is an interesting name to be in that. It sounds like she's having, she broke her thumb this past week, so it sounds like she's mostly just having a good time out there. Terrific. And so we are just about 20 minutes deep in this year's Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K race. We're going to throw it to another one of our awesome stories from another runner in the field named Marisa. We'll go to that now. I'm Marisa Elero. I'm 82 years old this year, and I love running. Come on out with me and have fun. <laughs> hey, that's fun. I love it fun. I came in America when I was 27 because I got married to my wonderful Italo Elero. 
I always loved the mountains. The first time that I really thought for me to be able to possible to run is when Joanne and Andy had their first marathon. I followed Joanne and Andy all the time. They were running here and there, and I really wanted to do it too. So the Camino is 516 miles. Yeah, you know, I said, yeah, why not? I can do it. That was my biggest adventure. I didn't know anything about the Camino. I heard one lady, she was in her 60s. She had a show talking about her Camino. She didn't know anything about that either. At that time, I was 76. I said, boy, if she can do it, I can do it. I can walk every day 10 miles, 15 miles. <laughs> you know, what, what's the difference? Do, you don't do anything else than walk and eat and talk to other people. I went straight ahead without turning around because if I would turn, I don't know. And from that time on, I walked for a month, 27 days. I think it's for everybody to walk. Uh, if you can go on the end of your street and feel happy with yourself, that's better than sitting down and do nothing. That's what I say, in any age. But you have to start in some place, and you have to keep on going. Don't stop. So I would say, let's go. Let's go outside <laughs> and enjoy the sun, the rain, the wind, everything because when you're outside, you feel alive. The uh, Schuylkill River Trail, also known as the SRT, it's, it's ideal for that Monday run. If anything's on your mind, let it loose and just enjoy these miles. A little Monday night therapy. It's been such a blessing to be able to just hang out with my friends and go for a run. It's more of a family than just a run crew. I'm not going to say that running is life, but running is a huge part of my life. Or her or not, I think, based on that camera position, but very, very fast runner indeed. Joanna Fortier, again, representing the East Coast, we believe, from Vermont is what we've been told. Again, Eric LaPuma was second place here in the 52K last year, or I'm sorry, yesterday. So the East Coast runners are here representing proudly. Awesome to see so far. So it sounds like we were muted there for just a second. So if you missed that, um, thanks to our viewing audience, it does sound like that runner that we were following there for a second is one of our leading ladies. We don't know where in the lineup she is, if it's one, two, or three. Um, but it sounds like it was Joanna Fortier um, based on a, a leg tattoo ID, I think is what came in <laughs> through the audience. Um, very, very fast runner. Again, from the East Coast. So cool to see the East Coast representing. East Coast representing proudly. Awesome to see making all those East Coast trail runners very proud from New England, from New York, from 
sort of the mid-Atlantic area. Trail running is a worldwide phenomenon, best sport in the world, and we're so happy to be bringing you this broadcast here today of the Broken Arrow Sky Race. This has been such a fun race weekend, Corinne. It's our second time here doing this together. It's such a fun awesome weekend here in the Tahoe area. If you guys haven't been, we would highly recommend you come for Broken Arrow. It is much more than just a race. Corinne and I got to do some fun panel discussions yesterday. Corinne, what are some of the highlights from this year's weekend for you so far? I mean, I got to meet Lauren Fleshman. That was pretty cool. I've uh, been a <laughs> fan for a now, long yeah. time. I think that was peak. I've, I've peaked now. Yeah. <laughs> I got to lead a panel that Lauren was on um, along with a bunch of other amazing women, and it was a really wonderful way to kind of round out the afternoon yesterday. Incredible. So you will see at the bottom of our screen here, not only the Strava elevation profile of today's course, but in that bottom right-hand corner is a code for you to sign up for a Strava subscription. Corinne and I are both longtime Strava users, one of the greatest tools ever invented, ever created for athletes of any different sport. Of course, Corinne and I are both trail runners, but Corinne comes from a Nordic skiing background. There are so many new tools and capabilities on the Strava platform. So if you have not checked out Strava yet, please go do so now. There's a discount code here on the screen. You'll see it in the bottom right-hand corner, BASR-60-2022. Big thank you to Strava again for making this live stream possible. It is so appreciated. Their investment in the sport, bringing these images to the general public, showing them the beauty and majesty of our great sport of trail running. And without their support, this really would not be possible. Two years in a row, Corinne and I have had the privilege of sitting here in studio, and it's all thanks to the good people at Strava. And what a great tool, what a great utility it is for your, to monitor your training, to monitor your stress load, to just notice the, the aggregate training load, maybe notice when you're doing a little bit too much, when you're being lazy. It's a community platform too, right? Sure. I, I, for me, I get a lot of community out of it. I follow my athletes on it. I get to interact with friends who I don't get to see that often. I get to find routes. I just moved to Seattle. So getting to link into the Seattle running community via Strava has been a huge help for me to find I was like, okay, I need a place to do 20 minute intervals. Strava came through. So I think it's, it, you can use it for so many various things. And I really, I personally really enjoy that community aspect of it. When I need a little bit of motivation, Strava's there for me. No doubt. Kudos do a lot for our morale as athletes, I think. And it's so fun to see what your friends are. file from years prior to do a little analysis of the race course that you can expect to confront and here we are up on the ridge oh just got a quick shot of howie stern up there howie stern long time ultra man in our sport amazing race photographer i feel like that's i, I find like those images that he can produce from these events are, are incredibly inspirational no doubt not only doing great coverage but also capturing the spirit, the beauty of the sport, the challenge of the sport. And so we are awaiting more coverage, more footage of the front of both our men's and women's races. As soon as we have updates on that, we will let you know. And we are going to have cameras on athletes for the vast majority of this race. These first few miles are the most challenging in terms of coverage. So we will get back to our race leaders here momentarily. Yeah, and I, we had a question in the, um, actually from Morgan Elliott's family in the chat about men's and women's kind of course record times on there. And it's, uh, we believe it's 152 for the men and, and 214 for the women. So we'll be seeing what kind of times these athletes can produce today. It will be interesting. Here we are on the ridge. That is Howie Stern there. He's got two cameras around his shoulders. He's giving the high sign. Hopefully that means he's cheering on our lead athletes. Yeah, this, I believe this is a Red Dog Ridge. We saw this section of the course during the VK as well, the 26K and the 52K had to kind of take, I'm going to keep saying wiggles. They've got to take some wiggles through the woods yep. to get over to this section. But this is, I thought this section of the course was so beautiful, popping up onto Red Dog Ridge. Spectacular setting here to go full gas up and down these beautiful mountains here in the Lake Tahoe region of California. 
If you've never been here to the Tahoe area, you must put it on your trail running destination. There's so many great spots all over the country. This is certainly one of them. Not only the Broken Arrow Sky Race, the Western States 100, the oldest and most legendary 100-mile race will be starting footsteps from where we sit right now here in the heart of Palisades Tahoe as well. Hallowed grounds here in trail running. Yeah, we won't be cold next week, I think. I think we'll be we'll be <laughs> sweating buckets on the Auburn track. Um, honestly, this time next week for sure. The opposite. We're, but, yeah, our camera, our cameras are running. We can see, we, I don't know, you see us, we see 16 other, other camera shots in the studio and, uh, we're, uh, waiting to locate our lead, our lead male athletes. This might be them on the drone shot. Yes. These are our lead male athletes. I believe that looks like a group of two, three, four, five athletes, maybe in that shot there. Yeah. Terrific. So those early two leaders that we thought we were looking at before on that previous drone shot either got passed or those weren't in fact our leaders at that point. Things will start to shake out for everyone and we'll start to, things will start to become clear as we make our way to that, that, that big aid station up top. This climb does not look steep on camera, but it is Very incredibly steep. steep. And I believe that's what's being highlighted at the bottom of the screen. You can kind of see those Strava segments in red. And I believe that is that big climb there. I remember hitting it and it felt like a wall last year. Yeah. Speaking of which, I think we have a Strava segment piece that we can play about this Red Dog Ridge section. I think we're going to go ahead and cut to that here in just a second so you can get a full appreciation of the terrain that these athletes are traversing now. And here they are cruising up the mountain. Broken heart, the CR for men, 3 minutes 27 seconds. For women, 5 minutes 25 seconds. A very steep, hard grunt up the mountain like Corinne just mentioned. And what a great shot this is of our, looks like, top five men in the screen here. Again, tough to identify who these runners are right now. As soon as we get an update, we will make sure to share that with you, our viewing audience. But if you are just joining us, we are now 33 minutes into the race. Again, we expect the men's winner to finish in about an hour and 51 minutes. Women's winner in about two hours and 14 minutes. So we are well underway here. And as they make their way further up the mountain, it may be counterintuitive, but the further they go up, the better our coverage is going to become. We've got a bunch of people waiting up there with gimbals and GoPros, and we're going to be beaming that footage straight into your YouTube feed here on the Broken Arrow Sky Race YouTube channel. So make sure you stick with us. A lot of dramatic racing ahead. Again, if you're just joining us, Corinne and I were mentioning last year's race here at the 26K, which was probably one of the most entertaining races I can ever imagine spectating in trail running history. Corinne, how pumped are you right now? I am incredibly pumped. I'm so excited to see this race get to shake out. One runner we missed earlier, um, who's running, I believe, in a pink, a pink top, is local Incline Village um, guy, J.P. Donovan. He's been in these races for a long time. He's won the VK mm -hmm. here. Super talented mountain athlete. Um, we'll be kind of curious to see how he mixes it up. But I did. we did get an ID on him early in the race from uh, some people watching at home. So thank you for shouting out JP Donovan in that mix as well. Great. And I'm just looking at Joanna Fortier's results here. Again, we believe that she is either in the lead of the women's race or at least in the top three, representing the East Coast proudly. It looks like this season, earlier in the year, she raced the 60K at the Black Canyon Ultra in Arizona. So Joanna Fortier, again, we believe to be in or near the lead of the women's race. Another new character, at least for me, on the scene. And great to see her here mixing it up in unfamiliar terrain in the... She she did say yesterday after um, Eric finished, she's like, I don't even have the race tomorrow now. I'm just so happy. Yeah, so cool awesome. to see her get on the start line today. Hopefully she's channeling some of that stoke from yesterday from Eric's finish. Yeah. Yeah. I met Eric here in the village yesterday as well. I said, hey, how'd the race go? He said, hey, I finished second place. I said, awesome. I was just doing some panel discussion, so I missed it. But well done, young man. Yep. It's... It sounds like from the viewing audience, we believe Cam might be hanging out in that lead group, probably in about third place. Um, we think Kiernan Ney is up in that group as well. 
Oh, here we go. That's Andy Wacker here. This is the lead of the men's race. Andy Wacker from Boulder, Colorado, one of the great mountain runners, especially in these sub-ultra distances. It looks like that might be Eli Hemming right in front of him. Can't confirm that quite yet, but we will get that confirmation here shortly. The top two men here screaming up this first climb on the Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K course. Again, Andy Wacker here in the pink hat, white shirt from Boulder, Colorado. And I do believe that is Eli Hemming just ahead of him there in that blue shirt, black short combo. He is also from Boulder, Colorado. And if you missed us talking about this earlier, Eli Hemming comes from a professional triathlon background. He and Cam Smith had an incredible duo ba you know, battle for the VK championship on Friday. Eli came out on the short end of the stick, but a proud second place yeah, finish mom, in the VK. Mom Hemming in the chat just chimed in and did, did say that is Eli Hemming in blue. Thank you, Mom, mom Hemming, Hemming for right. shouting, shouting out Eli. It looks like we've got Eli in first. It looks like Andy Wacker in second. And it, we think Cam Smith uh, is in third. Okay, terrific. So Cam Smith and Eli Hemming are going to do battle again here, just two days removed from their first competition. It's going to be incredible to see. And we should also mention that Tabor Hemming, Eli's partner, is also racing and is one of the favorites in the women's race. So a, a fun storyline to follow throughout today's race. The Hemming the Hemming clan here trying to, trying to make some more trying to make some more money they made good money in the VK on uh, on Friday with a second and a third place finish there <laughs> yeah. so excited to see both of them mix it up in this field again today so again on on screen right now is our lead two men in Eli Eli Hemming in that blue top followed by Andy Wacker in second um, someone in the chat said they pulled Andy Wacker from their fantasy team like three minutes before the start <laughs> probably because I think he he kind of held on for a 10th place finish in the VK after a after kind of maybe a too too hot start there so but we'll remember last year Corinne he also had a disappointing by his standards VK and then came back and finished third in the 26k last year and behind closed, and closed hard there yeah Darren, yep so here we are, still with our lead men here. This great drone cam as Eli Hemming charges off the front of the men's field, making his way up to the high point here on today's course. We are about 38 minutes into this year's race. So these guys are starting to make some progress. We are looking back down the hill now. Yeah, we're trying to get there. We go. That There's looks Max that's King. Max King, and that looks Steve like Kieran. Kirsch. Is oh, it? No. Yep. That, 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 that's Steve. He's pulled Steve. his arm sleeves. May or no? That might have been Kieran and Nay. They honestly, they've got very similar builds. Yeah. They got the light blonde hair. So I don't know if that was Steve or Kieran right behind Max King on our screen. We didn't quite catch it on our end. And we are trying to find our first female for you all. We're going to be heading kind of down mountain, down mountain to find her. So, so we're going to be looking for our lead female heading down the mountain here trying to track down who we th we think it's Allie Mack but it could be Joanna um, time will tell it will be a surprise here in the studio just like it is at home for many of you watching big smiles here great to see sleeves off the sun is out hopefully it's warming up maybe it's warmer than it feels it certainly is when you're pushing as hard as you can up a mountain get that engine revving hot it's a great day to be shredding in the mountains more big smiles from our runners here so good to see and if you at home ever pick up a bib number we've got that list in front of us too so i'm trying we'll, we'll be iding runners off their bib numbers here periodically as well because sometimes that's the best way for us to figure out what is going on out there and we did get uh at least some more confidence that that was stephen kirsch behind max king Difficult to see exactly what position they were in heading up the hill, but they are very much in contention 
for a win or podium performance here today. Great to see those guys off to a great start. Max King, of course, an all-time legend. Steve Kirsch kind of representing the next generation. Here we are with what looks to be... That's not Ally Mack. ...one of our female leaders. We got a blonde ponytail. F1 here on our screen, not Formula One, but the first female here in today's race. Again, so many new characters in the sport. Even Corinne and myself are having a hard time identifying. So this is F1. It's not Ally Mack, and it is not Joanna Fortier. So trying to get an ID. Is this... Solomon. Oh, this might be this might be Sophia Lackley. She was on your women's panel yesterday. She was on my women's she? panel yesterday. She's a Solomon athlete. This might be Sophia Lockley. That does look like her. Olympic it? Olympic Nordic skier, U of Utah skier, super talented athlete. She's done some of the shorter mountain um, races, but this will be you know kind of her first like real immersion into the sport of trail running. Yes, so cool. The Nordic skiers are here. We mentioned Sam Hendry earlier, also. Her University of Utah Nordic ski teammate. I had the privilege of chatting with him a little bit on Friday after his VK, just 22 years old. And he is here and a force to be reckoned with in the trail running world coming from that Nordic ski background. Just again, another such a fun storyline to follow all weekend. People coming from all different athletic backgrounds to test themselves in the mountains and on the trails. Such an exciting time in our sport. Maggie confirmed too. I recognize those glasses definitely, Sophia. <laughs> so, Nordic shades. Nordic right? shades. Yes. The big, the big sunglasses. So yes, F1 on your ski screen right now is Nordic skier turned trail runner. Although I'm sure she'll still be be Nordic skiing all winter. K dominant victory in the VK on Friday. Such a strong runner. Ali McLaughlin here in second place, moving up the mountain well. Yep, so we believe F1 will be Sophia Lockley right now. Second place, we believe, is Ali Mack. Really excited to see how this shakes out. Yeah, and Ali is probably the best, if not one of the best climbers in the field. So interesting to see Sophia out in front of Ali Mack early in today's race. Yeah. But once again, it's like you put a Nordic skier in a VK, they generally do pretty well too, yeah. because it's basically a VO2 max test. These athletes, those athletes are machines when it comes <laughs> yeah. to going uphill. They've got high power output, high aerobic output. You know, that, that is definitely their jam. They're super, super strong. Yeah. And last year, Ali McLaughlin, it bears repeating, did the Triple Crown, winning both the VK and the 52K. Can't remember where she finished in the 26. This year, she's opted to only do two races this weekend. Ali McLaughlin, super strong runner from the Colorado Springs area, second place in the Pikes Peak Marathon last year. Again, she's known as a climber, but definitely proving. Second place behind Stevie Kramer at the Pikes Peak Marathon last year. She is a well-rounded runner. She can definitely run down these hills strongly as well. Can't wait to see how this plays out. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited to see that there, there could be some shuffling as this race goes on. There generally is. It's very uncommon that these races are one wire to wire, but it does happen. We it see happened it happen. last year. Yeah, yeah. Both Janelle Lynx and Joe Gray winning wire to wire last year. Speaking of Janelle, we haven't seen her yet today. Really interesting athlete. I don't, really don't know much about her, her background, about her personally. I was just introduced to her here at the live stream last year in the 26k when she had an awesome win she's done well in some of these Cirque series races short mountainous courses so we'll see if janelle Lynx becomes a factor again today do you know much about her i don't know a whole lot about her i know that last year went really well and that she ended up doing the the kind of like the the golden trail oh, right. series finals yep. for she the for the domestic ones she mm -hmm. won that um she signed with innovate at the like at the end of the last season so she's got a little bit of a sponsorship going on right now nice. super excited to see how someone like Janelle Lynx and, and Sam Lewis, again, who was a factor in that race, I believe she was second or third last year, um, where she ends up mixing it up there too. We are going to cut back to the lead men coming up the ridge here, looking back down the hill. Beautiful, spectacular vistas. Hopefully they can at least look over their shoulder and enjoy it for a split second in between they have heaving time to breaths. Do that? Yeah. Not, not a chance. Not a chance. They'll do that tomorrow. Looks like a blue shirt out front, though, so that's going to be our lead man, Eli Hemming. 
Looks like we've got some separation. The field is definitely starting to spread out here. Eli Hemming putting the pressure on the lead men here. Looking mega strong, rocking that blue tee, looking down the hill. Looks like Andy Wacker still in second place. Here we are, men's leader, Eli Hemming from Boulder, Colorado. Followed closely by Andy Wacker going up that hill. Definitely a very steep section of the course out there right now. And I'd be curious too, this upper section is where like someone like Morgan Elliott made a bunch of time up in the VK. And so we can look back and we're seeing third, we're seeing fourth and fifth. So I'm wondering, you that know, Cam Smith there's third. definitely room for these athletes to move up and up and down. So Cam Smith from Crescent Butte, Colorado, our VK champion, rocking that Dina Fit kit with his red ponytail tied back again. Another one of these athletes who spends most of his year on skis, a world-class ski mountaineering athlete. Was the first, I'm trying to get this right, he was the first senior men, male winner of a Schemo World Cup this year. Yeah, in, in the Europe. vertical, in so the vertical. That, that kind of that VK specialist. And it looks like, from some of our follow cams that aren't on our screen right now, I think... There's Morgan Elliott just came past. I think Janelle, this is Janelle Links, I believe, yep. on screen now. I believe this is our third female Janelle Links, last Janelle year's Links. winner. Last Do you year even know where in, she's from, where she lives? I think she's in Colorado. I can figure this out. Someone will tell us that we're wrong in the chat and correct us. Looking strong, that power hike strategy. Again, you breaking into a jog again, but just for our viewing audience, you'll notice often that our runners will break into a hike not necessarily because they're tired, but because it's more efficient. They're getting a little bit more power. Getting a little H2O, a little hydration fill up for Janelle. Early in the race, kind of surprised to see her getting this water break. Either trying to be intelligent or maybe a sign of a little early fatigue. Yeah, I mean, most of them, she's... she's clearly carrying maybe just a cup or maybe just a bottle. She's yeah. not carrying a pack. Everyone's got their own strategy out there based on if they're carrying a handheld, a pack with or two soft flasks. At all. Yeah. So, um, you know, got to get a little hydration in while you're out there for sure. This is our third, our third female Janelle Lynx. Third female and defending champion Janelle Lynx. And I can see on a different screen up here, uh, we still have a feed of those lead men going up. And I did see Sam Hendry um, and Morgan Elliott also coming awesome. through, I believe, in fourth and fifth. So if I am accurate, I think it was Eli Hemming, Andy Wacker, Cam Smith, Morgan Elliott, and then Sam Hendry in our top five. And there's Eli again, followed closely by Andy Wacker. Two Boulderites in the lead of the men's With race Cam here. Cam Smith right there in third. So. Three Coloradans in the front. Yep. Cam Smith from Crested Butte. A bunch of altitude boys out there. And just so everyone remembers too, we only have so many volunteers and so many cameras. And we operated with like a single drone drone operator on Friday. And so we're getting you all the action we can as we can, trying to follow the front of the race, trying to pick up as many women as we possibly can. But remember, we only have so many volunteers out there and so much service out there. So bear with us as we find all of the racers over the course of the feed. And we'll be on air long after the top men and women finish. So you'll be getting more mid-pack, more backpack coverage as well as we try to follow along with the lead of both the men's race and the women's race. Eli really putting pressure on the front of the men's race. We just saw Morgan Elliott and Sam Hendry back in fourth and fifth, but we're back with Eli Hemming looking super strong. And he's definitely starting to try to break the elastic a little bit on the guys behind him. I think Andy Wacker was roughly about 10 seconds, maybe Cam Smith 30 seconds back. So clearly there is at least a little bit of separation. Those numbers don't sound large, but in a race of this distance, if you can get even a little bit of daylight in between you and your competition. It does a lot psychologically and uh, certainly is a sign of strength. Eli Hemming making quick work of this beast of a climb as we it's make our way towards too. He's making minutes. it look flat. Yeah, it really is. Really solid. And they're going to be coming up towards a more technical ridge section here. You see yep, Andy same. Wacker. There's definitely some daylight there. Yep, Eli's no, got I some think separation. Eli, I think Eli made a little bit of an acceleration through that zone, trying to create some separation between himself and Andy Wacker and Cam Smith behind him. We think Sam Hendry possibly, and then Morgan Elliott are those fourth and fifth place males. 
try to get confirmation of that as they crest some of these bigger climbs. All goes, five of whom are doubling back from the VK. Yeah, that's, that's, that is very cool to see that they, they showed up. They got that, that rust buster. They kind of opened up their legs on Friday yeah. with the VK and now are back for the 26K. And how cool is this, folks? A big shout out to our drone operators bringing these fantastic visuals. I think this might be that quick little downhill section before they continue the slog up to the summit here. And wow, what a beautiful day here in the Sierra Nevada mountains of Northern California. The lead men traversing this ridge on a beautiful though cold day here in the mountains. And I see a little further back in the field that looks like Stephen Kirsch coming through on a different feed. Yeah, big, big shout outs to our drone, our drone operators making this happen out there. F1 here. Sophia, the Nordic skier, hands on knees, mixing it up with these lead men. What's Sophia's last name? Lockley. Sophia Lockley. Where's she from? She is based out of Utah right now. Oh, She's right. a U of Utah skier. She actually, she was a transfer. She skied at Middlebury and then transferred out to U of Utah. And Utah's got, I mean, they've they keep winning the NCAAs. They had really? two women from their Nordic program make the Olympic team this year, her and Novi McCabe, um, super young athletes. It looks like she's got some separation as well. Over Allie Mack. Yeah. So she's still racing collegially. Yep. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, this winter Sophia was racing Sophia Lockley off to an awesome start again. So many new characters in the sport right now. What an exciting time. A collegiate Nordic skier. Off to an early lead here in the 2022 Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K. Back here with some sweet drone footage looking down the valley. Gives you a great perspective of how far these athletes have already come today. There's Back Allie Mack, F2. F2. Allie McLaughlin, the vertical kilometer winner the past two years. Crushing this climb. Last year's 52K winner as well. Very, very strong, very talented athlete. So roughly maybe 30 seconds behind here. Still very much a competition. Yeah, and we'll try to find our F3 in this field as well. We're looking for Janelle Lynx, we believe, to be our F3 in this position. But again, Sophia Lockley leading Allie Mack right now in the women's race, putting on quite the show in, in Sophia's first official trail race yeah i think if we could go to feed four we've got some of our lead men coming in just saw andy wacker screaming past and there's cam smith yep cam smith in third place here cruising down the hill now, just a little, little technical pile. area right there. Hard hard to be the operator of the follow cam as they come through that little section. Yep. So Beautiful day. One, two, and three have passed through there. We would expect to see Morgan Elliott and Sam Hendry coming through here momentarily. Yeah, someone in the chat said there's something in the water on that U of Utah campus. Because you're right, Sam Hendry, another uh, U of Utah skier canadian skier i just followed him on instagram yesterday after we chatted what a great young kid seems like he's got all the talent here we are split screen we've got janelle links f3 defending champion here probably a minute and a half behind sophia at this point so the separation has definitely but occurred janelle is a beast on the downhills yeah. she's a super super solid downhill runner so we'll see if she can close at all on Allie and sophia out in front of her as they crest towards the top of the course so if you are just joining us sophia lockley in first place followed by ali mclaughlin in second janelle links rounding out the women's top three and we are really starting to make progress in today's race things are heating up getting exciting and we are back behind cam smith from crested butte colorado the schemo world not world champion, but a, a world-class ski mountaineering athlete. He also messes around on Nordic skis. He rides his mountain bike, a very versatile mountain sport person. Yeah, multi-sport athlete. And in the chat, too, um, someone mentioned that Sophia has done a few trail races. She's done, some of the, she's done a Cirque Series race in Alaska. 
um, Bird Ridge. The Alaskan mountain running scene is pretty impressive. They have all these summer races. There's Allie Mack on our screen right now. So Sophia has done some short races, but she was excited to mix it up in something a little bit longer this weekend. So, so cool. Can't wait to look her up here after today's race. Terrific. And I think we've got one of our fan favorites. Uh, we'll cut to that in a little second, in a, in a couple seconds. Cancel what I was about to say. We are still looking down the mountain here. So, oh, here's Tabor. believe that Tabor Tabor Hemming is our is hanging out in fourth in the women's race. So cameras are bouncing around that is Morgan Elliott in the green tank top same same green tank he was in for the VK on Friday excited to see him back in these shorter distance races super super solid athlete and yeah. he's a mean downhill runner too so we'll see what he can do as as the course peaks out and he starts running down the hill. Yep. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if he was able to gobble up at least a couple of the guys out in front of him. Starting to, yeah, and it's one of those things of when will he run out of distance? Yep. You know, at, with, with it only being 14 miles at some point, he might close. He might run out of distance towards the end of that race. Yep. If he had an extra mile or two, that might make a big difference at the end of something like this. Yeah, so... What you guys can expect to see here fairly soon is the leaders coming up over the highest point on the course as we get back to Ryan Becker here from Telluride, Colorado. A lot of Coloradans here in the top 10 of the men's race. But as I was saying, they'll come up over the top of the mountain and then they've got a mile and a half, maybe two miles of screaming fast downhill. Before much of another it on, little, Yeah, before another little climb back yeah, up. Much of it on sort of groomed service road. You can see that Strava elevation profile at the bottom of your screen here that downhill that you see once they come off the top of the hill is screaming fast so it is very hard to make up time on people who are in front of you on that stretch of the course just because it's not technical it's difficult to go super super fast we do have ethan veniklaassen with lucy. fan favorite australian lucy bartholomew as soon as we get confirmation that we've got that feed i think we'll throw it to ethan hanging out with lucy We'll see if we can get them up for a little bit of an interview here while we're in between cameras. Hey, this is Ethan coming to you from in front of the Strava tent where we've got a crowd of folks watching the live stream. I'm here with Lucy Bartholomew. Lucy had a fantastic race, finished third in the 11K a couple days ago. Uh, it's her third time here at the Broken Arrow Sky Race. The other two times were as a spectator. Lucy, yeah. what was it like to be out on the course the other day? Yeah, I mean, it was yesterday. I feel like you've had... Like, like, it's been a long weekend. Give me a break. Race directing, live streaming. Yeah, it was an incredible experience. I felt like, you know, Ethan was... You were lovely enough to give me a bib in the morning and, um, you know... Uh, Pre-Western States next weekend, I, there was a thought that crossed my mind of this is just one sixteenth of what I need to do next weekend, but it was so cool to be a part of the atmosphere and get to share a little bit of the mountain trails with everyone. Yeah, in my experience, I've learned that uh, breaking it up into and thinking about it in those times, uh, terms, oh, I need to do this 16 times, not the best strategy, but <laughs> so are you excited for Western States? You've been third there before. What's the goal this time? Yeah, I'm super grateful to be back here. I think after two years, one year of obviously Western States being cancelled and then with the lockdowns in Australia, I just feel immense gratitude to finally be here. Um, and the goal is, like always, to make my way to Auburn in the best uh, shape I can and compete amongst some of the best girls in the world on that. One of, one of the happiest women in ultra running. She's always got a smile on her face. Lucy, thank you for being with us. Best of luck next weekend. Back to you guys. And here we are back in studio. If you are just joining us, we are now 
an hour into the 2022 Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K. My name is Dylan Bowman, joined by Corinne Malcolm. We are brought to you today by Strava. At the bottom of our screen here, you can start to see a live feed of some of our lead runners making their way to the high point of this course. At the bottom, you'll see that Strava elevation profile. You'll also see a discount code. Go get yourself a subscription to Strava. We're going to have Mary from Strava here in studio to chat with us a little bit about their initiatives in trail sports. Really exciting stuff coming out from our friends at Strava as we look down the mountain at our men's leaders, Eli Hemming and Andy Wacker cruising this, up this from hill. From this camera angle, it's like when you watch a track race, right? You can't tell from <laughs> yeah. this angle what kind of separation it is, but they're both, they're both in frame. They're both clearly close together, so... That is Eli Hemming in the blue, followed by Andy Wacker in the white top and pink hat it right looks like behind him. Andy's closed that gap. I mean, it again, looks, it's tough to see, you know, the perspective. But, but it does look like they're like they're a little bit closer together as opposed to when we saw them just a little while ago cresting that steeper climb. Right. But Eli definitely looking strong in control at the front here. We were told to watch out for him. We sure. David Roach said, hey, yep. Eli's ready. He's ready to take over the world. So yeah. Eli having showing up this weekend on, on in a big way, um, making making his name known. Yep. He lives in Boulder, Colorado, a place where Strava CRs do not come easily, a place where some of the best athletes in the world live. His coach, David Roche, let us know that if not for a little watch malfunction he would have snagged a strava cr up green mountain just Which is uh, not, last week <laughs> not easy to do in that boulder community eli hemming retired professional triathlete um make it making waves in the trail running community which yeah. is very I, I i love seeing the fresh faces fresh face at the front of the women's race as well in sophia laukley so very cool to see multi-sport athletes or athletes from different athletic backgrounds right as opposed to the traditional yep. college track post-collegiate track or road racing it's it's i love seeing all these other athletes mix it up in the trail running world and what a great point i mean andy wacker does come from that more traditional road and track running heritage but aside from him most of the people in today's race, at least the characters that we've mentioned so far at the front, do not come from that and, background. I mean, Allie Mack came from a, like, she played really, really solid. Um, was it, she was a lacrosse or field hockey? Field well, hockey she, player? Field hockey. Yeah, ball sports athlete growing up, you know, like, really cool to see these <laughs> athletes come in um, to different sports. Maggie Guterell on the panel yesterday was like, I, I didn't do sports. Yeah. I found this late. Yeah. And what an incredible athlete she is excelling at the 200 plus mile events. Yeah. A little different so, than the 26 so K here today, but, um, really exceptional performances coming out of these athletes. Yeah. And I'm excited to see how close we get to Joe Gray's time of 152 yep. from last year for the men's race and 214 from the women's race. I think that looks like Rachel. Rachel was in the VK and finished sixth on Friday. Someone wants to help me ID. Um, the runner that we are following right now, I'm assuming this might mean ath this could be female four or female five. Um, I think it might be Rachel, but I am un uncertain of that. We'll try to get confirmation there. Yeah, it does look like her. Maybe if you've got the VK results pulled up from yesterday, we can give her a proper shout out. And there's Morgan Elliott. Hands on knees. He is closing that gap to Cam Smith, if, that, if that's what that spread is right there. There's Ryan Becker. I couldn't tell if that was Cam right in front of Morgan or not, but that is Ryan Becker on your screen right now. We just saw Morgan Elliott briefly. We'll see what's going on here. Ryan Becker in that rabbit kit. There's that looks Kiernan. like Kiernan. Another super young, 22, 23-year-old Coloradan, Kiernan Nye. Really interesting young athlete here. Was off to an early lead in the VK. Held on for, I think, a fourth-place finish on Friday. Doubling back here, Max King, the all-time legend from Bend, Oregon. Running a really strong Zagama one of the, marathon one in of the Spain. Most, one of the most versatile athletes that we've had in the sport. The, in the trail in the in the running space yep. in the past decade he's made the F olympic trials finals for the steeplechase he's excelled at maybe everything up to the 100 mile race yep. i don't think he's ever 100k really... world champion there's ashley 
Um, oh, Brosvin. Brosvin. Hoka athlete. Turning over the top of that climb. Got Allie Mack right there. Jamil Curry with a camera. Shout out to Jamil out there working hard as usual. Allie McLaughlin cruising through the pine forest here in the Sierra Nevada, making her way up to the summit. Yeah, and it's interesting to see all the different tactics out there, right? We're seeing we're seeing handhelds, we're seeing waste, we're seeing waste packs with a bottle, we're seeing packs um, with bottles. It's kind of like, do you want to stop at an aid station? Yep. Versus, do you want to carry a little bit more weight out there? That was a decision that I heard many athletes working through yesterday really? as they tried to figure out their hydration and nutrition strategy um, for the race today. Because what would you do? I think I'd be torn. I don't run with handhelds very often, and I kind of like the idea of just like having my bottles and being like good to go and not needing to stop at any at, at an aid station. But I totally understand the like carrying a small flask, calling it good to go. If you need a little bit of water from an aid station, it doesn't take that long to stop. But yeah, it's uh interesting strategic decisions to be made as we go back to our male leaders cruising up. Making their way to the high point of the course here. Oh, we're going to see them on the ladder soon. Amazing drone coverage. We do expect that, obviously, Eli Hemming, Andy Wacker in first and second. Still looking very strong. The Boulderites nearly together, though. Eli with a very small lead in front of Andy Wacker. Two of the most talented guys in the sport, especially in these sub-ultra distance races. Eli, fairly new to the sport, finished a very strong, proud second place to Tim Tollefson, one of the world's best at the Way Too Cool 50K in March here in Northern California as well. Andy Wacker can do he, it all, much like is, Max King. He's yep, very versatile. Super versatile athlete. Fast half marathons, 10Ks, can race in the mountains. Yeah, I think the only difference between him and Max, right, is that Andy keeps to these short distances, but he's been on, he's made many U.S. mountain running teams, um, shorter distance ultra U.S. teams for world championships. Andy's been in, been a staple in, I would say, the sub-ultra trail community for a long time. Yep. I can't wait to see these guys crest crest the that that ladder staircase to yeah. have the stairway to heaven, hit that little snow patch at the top, and then, man, I hope the cameraman we've got signed <laughs> up for that downhill Let is warmed up and job. ready yeah. because they are going to be screaming off the top of that hill. Yep, yep, and it's Zach Marion who's going to be following the leaders from the top there. Zach Marion, a great runner from the Salt Lake City, Utah area, he's going to be cruising he's gonna he's a great downhill runner but uh he is gonna probably have a difficult time keeping up with these guys with the races racing juices flowing and they're gonna be so close together right they're gonna hang on for a little bit they're gonna drop back to the next guy they're gonna hang on for a little bit drop back to the next guy we're gonna get really great footage of of the of our top our top men and top women coming down that road which is going to be screaming fast the runners are going to make their way through these rocks which is definitely a little bit of a, a, a you know Point, multiple points of contact, maybe three or four points of contact in some of these rocky sections. Put a hand down there. Looks like we've got two runners really close together. Is that our race leaders? It's difficult to tell. I do it think that's Eli like Hemming with Andy Wacker in front. Andy Wacker has taken the lead here in the men's race. Eli Hemming right in his back pocket, but we have had a change in lead. Sometimes this is just Eli maybe letting Andy do a little bit more of the pulling up the hill. There is a psychological toll that is taken when you are the race leader. So maybe Eli just wanted Andy to take a pull, much like cycling. Oftentimes you may want to let somebody else do the hard work at the front. But these two guys running super strong together, pushing each other to their maximum here as they make their way to the high point on the course. Yeah, followed, followed by a camera camera there along the rocks and this might be too where Andy's got a little bit more technical rock time experience than Eli might have and so this section just might feel more comfortable for Andy and then I'm really curious to see when they hit that road section off the top here you know it, it, if one of them can shake the other one through that section or not they both have such good leg speed yep. I don't know if there's going to be a clear a clear uh separation there <laughs> it's or not it's gonna be entertaining they are on the ladder here so they are probably about a minute to the summit stick with us here folks this is gonna start getting super super exciting as these runners 
let the uh, like, reins off and let gravity do its job and yeah, fly down the backside take, of this mountain. Take the brakes off off a little bit and just kind of let it let it rip. And they've got they're not it's not downhill to the finish from there. They do have another climb to go. I, you know, nope. I can't, I can't let the rubber band break. So we'll be interesting to see because there is an aid station over the top of this climb, I believe, for our runners. So they might just blast right through it, though. Honestly. Yes, it'll be very interesting to see. There's definitely psychological games that are happening. Some and there gamesmanship. is gamesmanship. There is some more. There's not. There's not a ton of snow on the course this year, but there is some more snow after this section on one of the flatter spots on the course, which is really awkward running, and that could definitely separate runners a little bit there too, based on what well, I heard from the 52K runners yesterday. Likely cut to another camera here. Yep, here we still have the drone. Andy Wacker followed by Eli Hemming coming over the top of the course. If you're looking at the bottom of your screen, you'll see exactly the end of that second orange band on that Strava elevation profile. That's where the athletes are on the course about eight miles in now. You'll see that long, fast downhill and then that punchy final climb that Corinne mentioned just a second ago. And what a great vantage point this is. We are with the race leaders, Andy Wacker, pink hat, white shirt, Eli Hemming, blue shirt, black shorts, two boulderites screaming off the front of this race. Yep, and it's one of those things, there's a, a tiny bit of technicality off the top of this. It's a little bit rocky, and then it really opens up on the road there. But they do have to kind of make it down to these rocks a little bit loose, a little bit, one might call it chundery, or if you're a climber, you might call it chossy. Um, but it's going to be a little bit loose, and then they're going to hit the road, and it's going to be a lot, a lot smoother sailing from there. Yep, looking down the hill there at our race leaders, and it looks like they've got at least a little bit of a gap here. It looks like they have created some daylight between one our first and second male over our third place male. There's Ryan Becker coming over the top. This might, I don't know if this is our third place male at this point or not, but Ryan Becker making moves, coming over the top on the stairway to heaven. Super strong young guy from Telluride, Colorado. Sixth place in the VK, rocking those fresh speed land kicks. And had a great performance at Way Too Cool earlier this year, mixing yep. it up with Eli Hemming and Tim Tolufson. Anyone who can mix it up with those two is is uh, kind of in a, the upper echelon maybe of the sport. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I think only 27, and here's Kieran and Nye. So if that's our top four, that's four Coloradans there. And then who is this in the red the red shirt? I don't think we've gotten is this a, a clear ID. It could be Sam Hendry in the all red. Having a little bit of a pixelation issue here on our screen. I think it's fine for everybody else, but... We are having an awesome time in here in studio. If you're just joining us here, we are about an hour and 15 minutes. Max King. On your screen. Stairway to heaven, master. Yep. Hour and 15 minutes into this year's race. There's Mael Backhausen there doing the social media for the Broken Arrow Sky Race. Make sure you go follow them on Instagram. We are back with race leader Andy Wacker cruising down some snow. This is kind of a service road here on the ski area here in Palisades Tahoe. Once they get off this snow, someone like Andy Wacker is going to be dropping sub five minute miles cruising downhill. Yeah, and it sounds like it's possible that Morgan Elliott was ahead of Ryan Becker there. So it could be um, Andy Wacker in one, Eli Hemming close behind in two, Morgan Elliott potentially in three, Ryan Becker in four. Maybe Sam Hendry in the red in five. If someone can help us ID in all red, there's Eli Hemming now coming off the snow. Going to be chasing hard to get back on Andy Wacker's heels there, hopefully. So I think those are our top five or so right now in the men's race. Yep, man. It looks like Andy's starting to get a little separation here. Andy Wacker, Boulder, this Colorado, potentially making his move here as they hit 
probably the fastest, most runnable section of the course. Definitely plays to his strengths as somebody who does come from sort of that collegiate track and road racing background. He has been very comfortable and has excelled on the trails for many years. So Andy Wacker, our third place finisher here in this race last year, doubling back from the VK where I think he squeaked out a 10th place finish on Friday here in the lead of today's race. Yep, and then one person we missed in that kind of run down of the top five, I do believe that Cam Smith is probably still in that, that, that third or fourth place position. So um, Cam and Morgan are probably together right ahead of Ryan Becker. That all red was Bijan. Oh, Mazzahari. he had a great performance in the VK. He was a total surprise for yeah. me. He was top 10 in the VK. He's a California guy. Um, I believe, you know, living at a little bit lower elevation, though, so maybe he's m the one guy to break up the, the mostly Colorado front From out Glendale, there. Glendale, California. Looks like only 27 years old. A lot of youngsters in today's race. Let's see what do we have here on our screen. It's tough to see for us. Doing our best to find the lead women here in today's race. Yeah, Maybe, Corinne, give us a quick recap of what's happening at the on the front of the women's race. Yeah, right. What we know right now in the women's race, which we'll hopefully get more clarity on as they come through that Stairway to Heaven section, is going to be our race leader, the young, talented Nordic skier of Sophia Lockley, followed by Ali Mack, the VK champion from Friday, followed by last year's winner, Janelle Lynx. We do believe that Tabor Hemming is up in that fourth or fifth place position. So it's going to be really interesting to kind of follow along there to see who who actually is in that fourth and fifth place position for the women. And then is someone like Janelle Links going to be able to close on Allie Mack and on Sophia Lockley in on the downhill portion of this course where she is very, very strong? Yep. And I believe this is Stephen Kirsch, who we just saw traversing the top of the hill. Stephen Kirsch from Flagstaff, Arizona. And we have received word that we believe F1 is going to be coming up the ladders here momentarily. So stick with us. We think it's going to be Sophia Lockley, the young collegiate Nordic skier from Utah. One of the most interesting stories in today's race. Sat on the elite women's panel that was hosted by my co-host today, Corinne Malcolm, yesterday. Any highlights from that combo with Sophia? I just, I thought, you know, most of the women on that panel, she was by far the youngest. You know, and when we're getting these great answers from everyone, answer, answering hard questions, right? Like, yeah. you know, what would you tell your younger self? And she was like, well, I guess I was in high school not that long ago. So maybe <laughs> I'd be better at answering this in a couple of years. But just really, you know, held her own, you know, spoke like a seasoned veteran. Um, obviously has a lot of experience being being an Olympian at this point, too. No one else on the stage could claim that title. Um, so very, very cool to see her just, I, I feel like, come into her own. Um, bumping up in distance in the trail world. I'm so excited to see what else she takes on this summer running for Solomon. Yeah, well, if she's able to achieve a victory here at the Broken Arrow Sky Race, as we see Patty O'Leary coming up the ladder section here, a good friend of both Corinne and I. But if Sophia is able to hang on and achieve a victory, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but that would be an incredible career highlight. And we have just received word that F1 is in frame. Yes, there is Sophia Making her way up the ladder section, Sophia Lockley. What a great story. She's not that far behind the lead men not right now. That That's where all. that Janelle Link's time last year of just, you know, of what, I think 2.14 might be coming into question there. We'll Beautiful see how fast Lake she can make Tahoe it down. Oh, in the distance there. What a vista to enjoy for our viewing audience. If you're not into trail running, what are you doing, man? You get to come push in the mountains like this. You get to enjoy a beautiful view of Lake Tahoe. You get to get a little bit of a suntan, embrace Mother Nature, get some competitive juices flowing, set goals, achieve things. Sophia Lockley marching up the snow field here in the lead, looking very in control of the women's race here. Olympian, she is not no unfamiliar stranger, with snow. Yeah. yeah, no stranger to snow or big stages. Sophia Lockley. Can't wait to follow this young woman's career. Yeah, they had a, a trio of women on that U of Utah team this year, and it was like, okay, which one of them's going to win the meet this weekend type of thing. Like, they were all so good, and, and two of the three of them um, were on that Olympic team. So very cool to see. Kind of off on one of our other cameras, we're watching some of the men go down that road too, looking at people like 
Um, it looks like Morgan Elliott's on that road section, just hauling. I'm excited to see if Morgan can pull back some time on someone like Cam Smith, on someone like, I don't know if you're gonna be able, anyone can pull back time on Eli and Andy, but Morgan might be the guy to do that. We're looking for F2 here, trying to figure out what that gap is back to F2, and we still we think F2 is going to be Ally Mac. We are waiting to see that for certain. Going to be looking for Ally Mac F2, and Janelle links F3 on our screens here shortly. There's still Sophia Lockley going over the top of this course. Ripping, 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 ripping. The blonde ponytail, those Nordic shades, the Solomon kit. Of course, the Broken Arrow Sky Race is presented by Solomon, so a lot of their great athletes are here. Allie McLaughlin in the second place. Allie's on the snow. She's not that far back. Not far back at all. Maybe, what do you think, 25, 30 seconds? Yeah, separating. I was going to say may maybe up to 60. You know, it's yeah. some of that distance. It, it doesn't feel that far, but it can take a little bit of time to cover it. So Allie Mack moving well over the over the climb, over the top part of this course. Our F2 on screen right now. That's the fr that's Friday's VK champion. Um, last year's VK champion, last year's 52K champion, Allie Mack. So we are an hour and 20 minutes into this year's race as we watch Sophia Lockley make her way down this little technical stretch of descent. Probably very happy to finally see a downhill on today's course. We expect the men's winners to finish in about 30 minutes, so don't go anywhere. These women's leaders should probably finish probably 15 to 20 minutes behind our men's leaders, so make sure you stick around. Don't go get your own training or long run in. Stick with us, get inspired, and then this afternoon, do whatever you want. Yeah, someone said, I've got my phone in the shower with me right now. <laughs> I can't miss a single minute. So yeah. Sophia's off off that little technical bit of downhill. She's gonna be hitting this open kind of gravel road section. Um, obviously a very talented athlete, obviously a very talented runner. Curious to know if someone like Allie Mack or Janelle Lynx, Janelle Lynx has a collegiate cross country and track and field background previous to being in trail running. So I'm wondering if someone like Janelle Lynx is gonna be able to close down a little bit on F2 and F1 yeah. going into this downhill that's section. A, that's a really good point, right? Because We've mentioned that Sophia and the Nordic skiers have incredibly strong engines, aerobic and Great aerobically. uphill athletes. Maybe not the skills, though, to navigate the technical stuff. But te so, well, not even the technical stuff, but just like the leg speed that's yep. required to really you know, open up a five-minute mile on this downhill. That's going to be a little easier for someone like Allie or Janelle Lynx than it's going to be someone like, um, potentially someone like Sophia Lockley. Someone, someone actually, Sophia on the panel yesterday said she ran a season across country in high school and hated running. <laughs> so it was kind of a shock to her that she's really found a lot of love for running in the last couple of years. So curious to see what the leg speed, what, what kind of leg speed she has on this descent. And big thanks to Tiffany Kerr here in the chat. We were asking earlier where Janelle Lynx is from. She is saying that Janelle graduated from CSU, Colorado State University on a full ride scholarship in track and cross country. This is her second year in trail running. Again, Corinne and I mentioned this earlier, but Janelle really came onto our radar at this race last year where she was victorious. We think she's in third place now. Right now we're looking at Allie McLaughlin, the second place women's athlete, probably about 30 seconds to one minute behind our leader, Sophia Lockley from Utah. And Allie can descend. Allie's a Cruiser. good descender. So if she can let take the brakes off here, she could make up some ground on Sophia Lockley through this section. So exciting to see what Allie can do heading into this long downhill bit of the course, if she can really close down on Sophia, who is out front. So, so cool. What great action in the women's race and what an exciting time in women's trail running right now. Story of last year is I think just the depth of competition and the development of the women's professional ranks in our sport. That's As we get back to Steve Stephen Kirsch. Kirsch. Looking good, flowing on this downhill section. One of our top 10 men making their way down. The camera's going to pull back here as we start to look for our top two females even yep. kind of coming into this down this this road section. And again, right, today is the 26K. Of course, is a tiny bit short. That's Andre from the Czech Republic on your screen right there in that green top. So 26K today. It turns out it's about, I think, based on Darren's, Darren's Strava from last year, about 14 miles um, of road.
with that really fast downhill, they'll hit the bottom of a little canyon and have a punchy, looks like about six to 700 foot climb. And we've got F3 coming up the ladder here. So a little bit of separation back to F3, I would say. I'd say Pretty F1 and F2 are, are not that though. far apart, but F3, we've got separation to there. It's hard for us to ID here. Our screen is a little pixelated, so bear with us. Is that Renee? That's Renee, I think. The with the pink hair, green top. Yeah. And, and is that's is that Ashley? Is, it Ashley? is that three and four together? Can we get confirmation there from anyone either in studio or at home? That's Ashley. That's for Ashley sure. for sure there. That might I think Ashley could be F three. This is Ashley. Um Brosvin, Boulder, Boulder Gal, good runner. Um starting to excel kind of at that fifty K distance. Wasn't she second at Way Too Cool this year behind? Yeah, behind MK Sullivan. MK Sullivan. Yeah, they ran they ran the early part of the race together. She, it looks like she won the the Quad Rock 25 miler in Fort Collins. Crudely, just like destroyed the Quad Rock 25 miler. Yeah. Wow. So no Janelle Lynx. At least we didn't catch her on the ladder. Yeah, so if she could still be in that top three. We don't know. We, we will missed get that we update. missed her bunch last year. She was running in a cotton. She was running in a cotton cutoff T-shirt last year, and we. It took us a long time to identify Janelle Lynx last year. So um, we think that Ashley might have moved into third. It's hard for us to tell on that end. It almost looked like Renee was up there too. Hard for us to ID. It looks like Janelle is approaching the ladder now. So that would She's be Ashley in three, Janelle in four, if that is the case. So Janelle might be losing some ground here. We think she moved back from third to fifth now. I think I will third... We'll say fourth or fifth. We're not sure if anyone was in front of Ashley. It looked like Ashley could have been our third yeah, place female, okay. which would put Janelle in fourth. So if we were correct in identifying Renee Matevier, is that how you say her last name? I, I don't know if the R is silent or not. I think also a... Um, you know, a retired professional road and track racer from yep, Bend, Oregon. Yeah, doing some OCR, doing some multi-sport adventure racing stuff. Super solid. She races and trains with Max King, a bunch of good Bend, Bend crew. F1 on our screen. Sophia Lockley making moves on the downhill. You know, kind of ro the the road cat track section here, yeah, looking she's super looking good. smooth, super controlled, efficient. No the, signs the, of weakness here. The audience at home does think that that was a woman on the ladder ahead of Ashley. We're not, we're not sure. We are the feed that we see in studio is a little bit more pixelated than what you guys are getting at home. So, um, we're definitely relying on you a little bit to help us with those IDs um, coming through your monitors versus our monitors. Yep, they said um, in green with blonde hair and a colored streak. That's what I thought too. Abby, Abby's helping us out in the chat here. Um, I think that might have been Renee. Is my guess. Yep. Anyway, we'll get that confirmation as soon as we can. As we see, I think this is Janelle Lynx coming over the top of the mountain here. She's kind of walking, Corinne. It looks like Janelle's race is not playing out as strongly as it did last year, but really, really incredible athlete here. She did not start the VK, so who knows? Maybe she uh, was having a tough week or something and starting to fade here. As we make our way into the second half of today's race, we've got the race director, Brendan Madigan, in studio here. Big shout out to the race organization from Broken Arrow. This truly is a world-class event. A big thank you again to our sponsor of today's live stream, that being Strava. Again, use that code in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen for a discounted subscription, discounted membership to the platform Honestly, one of the most valuable tools you could use as an athlete, no matter what sport you participate in. If you're a trail runner, a lot of new tools are getting rolled out by Strava now. So please do go check out that platform. We've got some bend, you, bend people chiming in. We do think that that, that was Renee. Just bend to confirm, dice. we think that Renee is in third and Ashley is in fourth, which would put Renee in, uh, which would put um, Janelle Lynx in fifth. So we believe those are our top five women right now. And... We just saw Ali McLaughlin come back through in second place. So Sophia has a pretty strong lead. And I think now is a good time to take a quick commercial break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back here in studio. The uh, Schuylkill River Trail, also known as the SRT, it's, it's ideal for that Monday run. If anything's on your mind, let it loose. 
and just enjoy these miles. A little Monday night therapy. It's been such a blessing to be able to just hang out with my friends and go for a run. It's more of a family than just the run crew. I'm not gonna say that running is life, but running is a huge part of my life. I love to do this thing. I love to run, I love to move my body, I love to be outside so much. When that is taken away from me, there's this grief. We want to learn how to re-walk and run again, but what am I supposed to do? The first thing that I thought to myself was that I don't know if I could do this again. Green Mountain has been this integral piece to my recovery and my return to trail running. Welcome back. And we are back here after that quick commercial break. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are just coming onto this feed, oh, my that's name Sam Lewis just across the screen. Sorry to, okay. to cut you off no there, worries. but that was just giving <laughs> giving Sam Lewis on on athlete a shout out there quickly as we saw her on on screen there. All right, Sam Lewis, just do a quick reset here. If you're just joining us, this is the 2022 Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K. We are broadcasting from the heart of Palisades Tahoe. My name is Dylan Bowman, joined by the great Corinne Malcolm, two of the biggest ultra and trail running fans in the world, having the privilege to bring this awesome coverage to you wherever you are today. Make sure you stick with us. We are in the second half of today's awesome races. Things are starting to get dramatic. Corinne, maybe do a quick recap of who we got at the front of the two races. Yeah, so right now we, we're waiting to find our men kind of coming out of that, that kind of, they, go, they dive down into a little bit of a canyon and come back out. So right now we believe heading into that anyway was in first place, Andy Wacker, followed closely by Eli Hemming, followed by Cam Smith, Morgan Elliott, and Ryan Becker. We believe that is our top five men's group. We will see how that sh shook out on that downhill and who climbs out of that valley in first place. In the women's side, we believe that it is Sophia Lockley, the 22-year-old out of out of the U of Utah ski program, 2022 Winter Olympian, Sophia Lockley, making a big splash this morning, independent of where she finishes, be it first, second, third. Huge, huge race for her right now. Second place looked to be... Allie Mack. Was that still holding true? Yes. Allie Mack. Uh, Allie Mack was F3, F2. Who had moved up into F2? No, no, no. no. Yeah, okay, oh, so Tabor is Tabor F3. Tabor is F3. Yep. Okay, good so to know. Allie so Allie Mack. F2. Yep, so to confirm, Sophia Lockley in first. Allie Mack, number two. We were thinking she might close on that road road thing. We believe this is F3. Tabor um, Hemming, formerly Tabor Scholl. Um, cruising on this road section hitting about to hit a patch of snow also up in that mix was um renee um metier metier of bend oregon i'm definitely not saying her last name right Metevier, former, i think former standout on the track um followed by ashley brosvin followed by janelle Lynx. so really exciting women's race as well in that mix you know corinne something we haven't mentioned at all is the prize purses on tap for today that are on the line for these pro athletes five thousand five hundred dollars for the winner of both the men's and women's races then thirty five hundred for second place a thousand for third 750 for fourth and 500 for fifth so big shout out to broken arrow for supporting these professional athletes with very generous prize packages janelle, janelle Lynx is on screen right now I've got high hopes for Janelle to move well on this downhill section. She was looking, I don't know if it was a little bit tired. I mean, I was gassed at the top of this yeah. last year, so I imagine it's, it's, it's the high point of the course. It's not an easy place to be, but Janelle's got good leg speed, so I'd be curious to see what she can do on the downhill there. Terrific. So we are back to high camp here. So the men's leaders, we expect to be climbing out of that canyon, coming through this aid station before the long, mega fast downhill action to the finish line. So we will get a great idea of who's still out front. Is it Andy Wacker? Has Eli Hemming made a move? Are they still close together? Who's behind them? The drama is about to play out as we look here at the high camp aid station this is this is sam hendry here we're not entirely sure where we are in the field 
But this is Sam Hendry. If he is in the lead, he is also a University of Utah Nordic skier. It would be unusual if he was in the lead, if he somehow made up all that time on that climb. Anyway, we are awaiting confirmation. We will get that to you just as soon as we possibly can. Yeah, and to go back to Tabor Hemming there moment, moments ago, I do believe that they are probably actually in like fourth and fifth or fifth and sixth position there based on where Janelle was because Janelle was right behind Tabor in that section. So I do think that Renee and Ashley are probably three and four, followed then by Tabor and Janelle in five and six is my is my guess there's yeah. there's peter mortimer making his way up the up through the snow up up above the ladder this is that, is that um cook clark that could be emma, emma cook, cook clark, clark heading down the road we kept messing up her name yesterday which <laughs> order it was emma's got a really good strong track and field background um this canadian gal living in calgary but is also an ocr athlete part of nicole um, maricel's dream team promoting women in the ocr world so cool to see emma cook clark out there racing as well i see on feed number seven right now is morgan elliott not far back from where we just saw sam hendry so that must be the back half of the men's top five, I would guess. So I think we may have missed our leaders coming through high camp. We will confirm who is in the lead of the men's race as soon as we can get a camera feed on those runners. But yeah, we believe right we're now, still looking for Eli, Eli Hemming and Andy Wacker. It'd be, I think, a big upset at this point if Sam Hendry and Morgan Elliott had passed them on that little, on that little dip down into that canyon. Yep. But right now we are looking at who I believe to be Emma Cook-Clark. We'll get a confirmation on that. We're looking for... We are going M1 back. one here on the cat tracks, what we're trying to find. We're, what, probably an hour 36 in. So we should be seeing our men kind of come th down through these this final bit of descending. It does get a bit wiggly through here. Again, wiggly is my word of the day. Okay, our screen is very pixelated, but we think that was probably Andy Wacker coming through in the lead still. If you guys could, yeah, Andy, Andy Wacker, Wacker here in go. the lead, the Boulderite, super, super strong athlete in the white shirt, pink hat. He'd feel good about this after coming back from, I think, what was probably like an okay day on, on VK. It's going to be super tight to the finish because we believe that Eli Hemming is hot on his heels. They've been going back and forth all day long all morning long really we're we're under an hour 40 into the race again joe gray's finishing time was 152 last year um back in october so we should be seeing our men finishing in not all that long another 10 10 12, 10, minutes. 10, 12 minutes down to Don't the finish line go anywhere you're not gonna want to miss this it's gonna be tight here. a tight out front followed very closely by Eli Hemming those two have been doing battle all day Eli Hemming has been in one-on-one -on -one duels all weekend coming off of VK second place with Cam Smith behind them we definitely have at least Sam Hendry and Morgan Elliott we didn't get we didn't behind. get eyes on Cam Smith we haven't gotten eyes yep. on Ryan Becker in that section yet, but we believe all those men are still in the mix, so we'd be kind of keeping... Third is going to be a surprise, I think, at, the, at this point. We know one and two are probably Andy and and Eli Hemming. How that's going to shake out 100%, who's one, who's two, we don't know quite yet. I feel like three might be a surprise at this point, because is, is Morgan Elliott in that mix? Is it Sam Hendry? Is it Cam Smith? Is it Ryan Becker? Um, we're kind of waiting to, waiting to find out how that shakes up, just because we haven't gotten good footage of those guys yet. And if you are new to the sport of trail running, what a great introduction it is to watch this awesome race day live coverage presented by Strava. This is part of the Golden Trail National Series here. And we've got, I think that's Stephen Kirsch here on our screen. Again, we're having a tough time seeing our feed, but bear with us. There's Stephen Kirsch, yes, from Flagstaff, Arizona. But as I was saying, this is about a 14 and a half mile course. I think oftentimes, especially in the U.S., when you hear of trail running, you think of like these 50 to 100 mile races. This weekend, we've had everything. We've had a vertical kilometer. 
We've had an Iron Face Challenge, which was sort of a Via Ferrata, sort of mixed climbing route. We've had a youth race, an 11K, today a 26K. We've had athletes do, do double back. We've had athletes yeah. triple down. Just so many different ways to enjoy the sport, right? You just you don't have to come in and immediately do the Leadville 100, right? You yeah, come I think here. we've talked about this a lot. In, in the U.S., we, we tend to really lean into the, the longer is better Especially you narrative. and I do. Oh, I, I know. It's our, it's our preferred modality. But I love these short races. I think they're so exciting. They're celebrated in Europe with races like Sierra Zanal and Sagama and I think that you know in Mont Blanc Marathon and I think I am so happy to see these super competitive sub 50k sub 30k trail races really do well in the U.S. at races like Broken Arrow. I really hope that continues to be the case. I can I hope to continue to have more races like Broken Arrow introducing prize money to encourage, incentivize some of the best athletes in the world to come test themselves on short distance races. We've been talking all weekend about how it's attracted runners. I mean, athletes from all different backgrounds, not necessarily runners, but skiers, Nordic skiers, obstacle course racers, triathletes. And what a great way to test yourselves in a beautiful area. One of the reasons why our sport is experiencing just exponential growth over the last 10 years or so it's just looks like we're seeing we, so we just caught a glimpse of cam i think on screen there moments ago if that's the case cam might be still confirming that third place position we're trying we're trying to get get confirmation there i think we missed him at high camp um so trying to get confirmation of where cam smith is in that is in that mix and and has someone like morgan elliott or um or one of the other guys been able to close down a little bit more on that descent yeah so this is, I think, Sam Hendry here. This so, is a really fun downhill. Have you been able to run this downhill? Yes, yes. It's flowy. It's got little rocks in it. It'd be fun to ride a mountain bike down. It's, It's got a lot of, you want to yell woohoo while you're out there. It's a really <laughs> fun downhill. But when you're going 26K race pace, it might also be one, one toe away from, like, disaster tri tripping out there. Terrific. Oh, so we, we are cutting one here. to our men's leader here at the Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K, Andy Wacker. Sorry, guys, our feet is having a tough time, but we are doing our best here in studio with an awesome crew behind the scenes making this possible, bringing it to you and your YouTube stream wherever you are in the country corinne and i are having such a great time this weekend f1 here sophia lockley absolutely ripping here it looks like coming into kind of the high camp aid station which means she made it down in that canyon and out of it without being overtaken by anyone so yep. that could in a lot of ways i think hope, maybe solidify that lead we'll see we'll, we'll try to get a split back to um ally mack on this section ally is also a good downhill runner so i'll be curious to know if Sophia was able to, to extend that lead or not. Yep, she's very much looking in control here. I see her on another feed. And uh, yeah, there she is, Sophia Lockley here, University of Utah, Olympic Nordic skier, looking very much in control. Corinne and I were just talking about after she crested the top of the hill to see if she had the experience and technical skills to really navigate some of these more challenging trails and had the leg speed on the descent. She is looking very much like a trail runner, not necessarily just a Nordic skier. Sophia Lockley, what an exciting new character on the scene, much like Janelle Lynx last year. This is really the first time I've ever heard of Sophia. So many exciting new athletes coming into our sport. Yeah, which which makes sense, right? She, she's done only, she's done some of the Cirque Series. She's done at least a Cirque Series race, maybe two or three Cirque Series races. She's done some of the, the mountain running races in Alaska um, during summer training up there. But, you know, she definitely will be a new name to people who are in that Nordic skiing community or in that collegiate skiing community. And so it's really cool to see um, her join that Solomon squad this year and be be a part be a part of that team and be a part of the scene because um, she clearly belongs at no, the front at the front of these races. No doubt. Can't wait to see what she chooses to do with her career. Men's leader here, Andy Wacker, coming into the final stretch here. We would expect to see him finish in the next five to seven minutes. Andy Wacker still in the lead. Your third place finisher from last year's 26K, tenth place in this year's vertical kilometer. 
Andy Wacker, awesome, awesome running from the boulder right as we await to see who's in second. It looks like he has... A he's got some daylight. It looks yeah, like he's got he's some daylight between himself and Eli Hemming. And while Eli Hemming is clearly a very strong climber, clearly very strong on the smooth surfaces, curious to know how he felt about that single track downhill, how he felt about you know, moving through some of that rockier terrain out there because, you know, if that's not his strength yet, I'm sure it will be. And I'm sure that will be very scary for all the other guys on the start line when that is the case for someone like Eli Hemming. And we'll remember last year, Corinne, you and I were on the edge of our seat watching Darren Thomas try to catch up to Joe Gray here in the final stretch. Let's see if we can get an equally exciting finish in this year's race. And of course, it doesn't stop until you ring that bell here at the finish line, just steps and away when, from where we when sit. It's gonna, it could be a nail better. We are now behind, behind um, Eli Hemming in blue. Okay, so based on what we're hearing from in studio, it sounds like Eli Hemming might have overtaken Andy Wacker at some point on that descent and could be leading the race. So you know as much as we know. We'll know when they get to that bell, but it sounds like Eli Hemming might have overtaken Andy Wacker at some point in that in that canyon and is now um, is now potentially our race leader. Yeah. Incredible. I take back everything I said about the single track descent. <laughs> Eli <laughs> yeah. Hemming is a force. Yes, Eli Hemming also fairly new to trail running. Can't wait to see what he chooses to do with his career. We've mentioned it a million times, but just to reiterate, he comes from a professional triathlon background. Officially retired from triathlon this year and has stepped onto the trail and ultra scene in a big way with an impressive second place finish at Way Too Cool behind Tim Tolfson, right ahead of Ryan Becker. Pretty close racing for those three. And um, now clearly putting on a show this week. Great battle between him and Cam Smith in the VK on Friday. And a great battle between him and Andy Wacker all morning. Yep, no doubt. So it's going to be very exciting to see how this plays out as these runners enter the final mile here on the course. Corinne, we might even be able to see them at some point through the windows that we see. It's going to be exciting. We're going to be super distracted as people, you know, start to kind of come down towards the finish line um, outside of the studio that we're in to, to watch the men, to welcome the men and women as they come down um, through the finish line here at Palisades Tahoe. We are waiting with bated breath to see what happens as we're not quite sure if it's official that Eli Hemming, Hemming has taken over the lead from Andy Wacker. They are both exceptionally talented athletes. They're both great downhill athletes. It sounds like based on commotion outside that we might be, we might have visuals on the hill. There is definitely commotion. People standing I'm hearing, up. I'm hearing cowbells. I'm Cell hearing phones people, getting pulled out People of are looking confused outside the studio here, trying to find our lead men making their way down towards the finish area, I see Jason Hardrath out there. There's Luke Webster, great photographer in the space. Good, good group of people ready to welcome those people down to the road. Um, once again, we are trying to get confirmation of Andy versus Eli. It does seem like from people in the audience that they do think that, that Andy is ahead of Eli Hemming. Based, okay. on, based on the feed coming into to your living room, coming into your cell phone, coming into your computer, that does sound like Andy Wacker is going to be Ahead of Eli Hemming, we are waiting to get confirmation of that down closer to the finish line. That is kind of what I thought going into that section. That would make sense to me. I think Andy should be a little bit faster through that section compared to Eli, but that is what it looks like. It's possible, according to people out there, that you know that that Andy might actually have quite a bit of daylight over Eli, but Eli is very, very fast. If I was Andy, I would be running scared okay. right now. I, I can see Andy Wacker in the window in front of us. He's going to oh, be coming around the corner. Goodness. Andy Wacker is in the lead, folks, so sorry about that. We were receiving a lot of different information. It's he hard is to going so fast. We are watching the cameraman <laughs> sprinting in front of him on from our angle out here, and I am worried that both of them are He's coming, got plenty come toppling of room here. down. Andy Wacker putting the finishing touches oh, on an awesome my victory gosh. here. He's definitely got room here. I can do it. Corinne and I have probably the best vantage point. We're going to lose him behind this tree, though, in studio. Unbelievable. Andy, Andy Wacker. Wacker. 
And shout out to our cameraman who's ripping probably sub five minutes. Look miles. at that. I mean, what people are seeing, um, we've got live footage, but you can, there's and also. We can see Eli now, Corinne and I, at least from our vantage point. Andy Wacker bringing it home. The Eli 2022 Hemming. 26K champion yeah. is going to be Boulder right? Andy Wacker. Come in, ring that bell, Mr. Wacker. Eli Hemming himself has a little daylight. Screaming down the hill. Andy Wacker coming through the finishing stretch. Oh, hands up. Putting on a show for the audience. Andy Wacker. Awesome. Congratulations. Bam. Ring that bell, young man. And here comes Eli Hemming. Close Probably behind. 30... Wait. Yeah, he's on the road. We just lost him. We just lost him out of sight. We're, we're looking out windows in studio here for those of you who are watching online. So we are literally watching the men come ripping down this fire road. What a race Eli by Hemming. Andy Wacker. Eli Hemming making it work for it as he comes in here in the home stretch to Boulderites making the front range of Colorado especially proud. Boulder, of course. If they're not training out. partners yet, they yeah, should be exactly. soon. Exactly. The He's your second place male, Eli Hemming. sports in the United States to a large degree. Eli wants to thank his red hot smoking wife, Tabor Flame. And he wants to eat anything that isn't a gel right now. Eli runs for Team Swap. That's David Rose's team in Colorado. He wants to win because in addition to those two second places, he was also second place to Tim Tollefson at Way Too Cool. And I can see out the window here, we've got, I think, third place about to round the corner. Sorry, false alarm. I'm looking out the window. Tough to tell exactly. But yeah, Andy Wacker, Eli Hemming going 1-2. And they've got a healthy gap back to third place now. What an awesome competition that those two had pushing each other all the way getting the most out of each other shaking hands at the finish line that's what it's all about and it looks like sophia lockley is making good moves down through the single track right now just really enjoying that flowy flowy downhill curious to know what the what what the spread is between between sophia lockley and ally mack but just making good moves, just put her hand down on a patch of snow there in that single track. Sophia Lockley right now is your F1, your top female making her way downhill towards the finish. This is a ripping fast. So this is going to be super fun downhill. Corinne. So last year, again, the men finish in about an hour and 52. I don't have the official finishing time. But it should be under that. It, it seems was about point. the same, but I would expect to see Sophia go way under that the 214 mark. Yeah. So an interesting thing to see. The men were about right in line with last year's results. We'll see if Sophia is able to take some time off the course record here at the 26K. This young collegiate Nordic skier. What a story. What an awesome athlete putting the finishing touches on her race. She has looked totally flawless all day, not showing any vulnerability at all. Never once looking like her lead was in jeopardy. I'm curious to know when she overtook Allie. You know, like, did we yeah. just miss her initially and she's led wire to wire? Like, that could be the story here. We don't know that answer. Yeah. And here comes third place, it looks like. Down the hill, Cam Smith. That's Cam Smith. We can see out the window here. We'll get a camera to see his finish probably, hopefully. But, man, Andy Wacker and Eli Hemming really put a gap into Cam Smith, your vertical kilometer champion, rounding out another podium performance for him today. What an awesome weekend for Cam Smith from Crested Butte, Colorado. Okay. And he's looking like he's got a gap too. And there we've got a camera on Cam Smith. The patented red beard and ponytail representing Dina Fit and the great mountain town of Crested Butte, Colorado. Cam Smith, Having only a good 26, weekend. 27 years old. A, a first and a third, not a bad weekend for Cam Smith either. Just He's got to be happy with that. No kidding, man. Looks so. like based on live stream results, Andy was in at about 150. 11. Great. So, so faster. two minutes under that time from Joe Gray last year. That is moving on this course. And here we've got Sam Henry coming down the hill. I can see here. He's going to be our fourth place finisher. Sam Henry, also Nordic skier from the University of Utah. Just 
What Gosh, an Matt. awesome storyline. I met this kid on Friday. What an awesome, what an absolute gentleman he was. Awesome to interact with him. I can't wait to see. I mean, think of the talent that we've got here. I mean, Andy Wacker's been a known quantity, but Eli Hemming is new. Um, Cam Smith is fairly new. Um, Sam Hendry is new. Sophia Lockley is new. They're all coming from different backgrounds. This is the future of our sport. Yeah, and right right now on camera, I believe this is Ashley Brosovan. That's a Hoka kit and a Nathan and a Nathan Pack. I don't know where that puts her in the field. She was in fourth going up the ladder behind Renee, but Ashley will be a better descender technically probably than Renee on this section. I don't know where Allie Mack is. I'm going to assume Allie Mack is still in second. That would put Sophia Lockley in first, Allie Mack in second, and Ashley Brosovan in third, potentially. So, good luck out of her. This looks to be Sam Hunter coming in. And I can see Max King now screaming down the hill in fifth place. The not great a, Max King. Not a bad race for Max Sam King Sam Hendry, what a weekend from this young man. Top fives in both the VK and the 26K. Max King winning the... Iron Face Challenge on Friday, coming in for fifth place himself. The Masters athlete from Bend, Oregon, Max King, ripping that descent. He told me he was getting ready for the for Mount Marathon coming up on the 4th of July, where he's been a champion before. And now I can see our sixth place runner on out the window here. It's going to be Morgan Elliott. Morgan Elliott also an awesome VK on Friday. What a great race great this to has see, been. Great to see that. Morgan in the warm-up on Friday tweaked an ankle. He had this kind of long bout with his weekend, ankle there. And I think that was kind of little, a little bit unsettling, but he's back in the 26K. Wonder if that, that hung him up at all on that downhill a little bit, not being able to trust it completely, but yeah. clearly another good day for Morgan Elliott. We're seeing him come down out the windows here. Um, into the finish line to finish yeah, six behind Max King. He's had a quiet couple years. I remember four or five years ago, he was really doing work on the North American sky running circuit. Really good in the he had, a, he had a catastrophic ankle injury in Western, at, oh, at the Western States I in can relate. I've 2018 been there. or 2019. And that really, it, that took a second to come back from finish run rabbit last year and is now back in the short distance stuff. And that is yep. so exciting to see, I think. Good for him. And then I think we've got Ryan Becker, who's going to be our, are we in seventh place now? Cruising down the hill. Three years old. This is Morgan on the women's race. So that's gonna be incredibly exciting and entertaining, but that is Ryan Becker cruising down. He, he was sixth place in the VK. This is gonna put him in seventh place in the 26K. Another awesome result by the Telluride local. A lot of Coloradans here in the a lot uh, of Coloradans in the top ten today. Max yeah. King representing though out of out of Bend, Oregon. Bend. So nice to see a little bit of a mix up there. Sam Hendry out of out of well, he's Canadian, but out of the Utusky program. Not sure where he's based for the summer. Um, so we're gonna be trying to find going back on course, trying to find our our lead women F1 should be coming up on our screens. Sophia Lowkley is gonna be our F1 thus far, getting that drone what footage. An awesome shot here. F1, Sophia Lockley, the story of the day. Just absolutely shredding this beautiful piece of single track here on the ski resort in Palisades, Tahoe. What a great visual. What a great way to experience the majesty of this incredible sport. As we go back to Ashley Brazovan here. So I don't know what position this puts her in. Tough to I tell. think I think Sophia's probably got a huge lead out front, but Ashley could have moved up into second. We haven't gotten confirmation of Allie Mack in a while. We're trying to figure that out for you all. And we are now two hours in to the Broken Arrow Sky Race here in 2022. The 26K is well getting close to the finish line. We are going to now cut to the finish line with an interview with Andy Wacker, your men's champion. Yeah, we did. Scratch hat. We will do that a little bit later. What? 
If you're just joining us, like I was just saying, we are two hours into the race now. We are rounding out the top Probably 10 men pretty close. here in the 26K. My name is Dylan Bowman, joined as usual by the amazing Corinne Malcolm, having an absolute blast. And it looks like we are getting ready for our interview with men's champion Andy Wacker. We'll throw it down there to Ethan now. We'll be right back. This is Ethan. We're at the finish line with our men's champion, Andy Wacker, 33 years old from Boulder, Colorado. Andy, that was a battle. Uh, you guys were absolutely motoring down to the finish. Closing miles somewhere in the low four-minute mile pace. Walk us through the race a little bit for you. Yeah, honestly, I had a pretty bad VK a couple days ago, and I'm just starting my trail season, and um, things finally came together today. I was just really happy. We had a big crew of guys running through all the way to the top of the course. Um, and so I knew my downhill was, was strong. And so when I came through the top of the course in first with Eli right behind me, I knew it was going to be a battle all the way down, and I knew it would be close. Did you, did you have a sense that he was chasing? I mean, I, I, how conscious are you when you're racing of where your competitors are? Yeah, I mean, you can look around, and Eli and I were so close. Like, I told him at the top, like, we're better together. we got to run together. So I knew he was right there, and we had to run the whole way. Well done. We're about to get run over, so we're going to get out of the way. Congrats, Andy. Okay, we are back here in studio. I am Dylan Bowman here with Corinne Malcolm. We have an awesome vantage point watching people scream down this dirt road to the finish line. We must be through about the top 10 men here in the 2022 Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K. Couldn't quite make out who that was. He just rung the bell, but stick with us. We've got the front of the women's race screaming towards the finish line now. Sophia Lockley in the lead. We believe this camera might be following her, though she's in front of this male athlete. Anyway, we will get camera on the leader just as soon as we can. Other characters at the front of the women's race. It's been tough to tell, but we know Taper Hemming is in the mix. We know uh, Allie McLaughlin is in the mix. We know Ashley Brassavan is in the mix. We know who else, Corinne, that Emma Cook Clark is there. So a lot of interesting yeah, things. Yeah, Janelle Link should be still in that mix. Tabor Scholl should still be in that mix. We're trying to kind of wait to, to, for the cameras to, to pan back to pick up our women as they come in. That is Sophia Lockley, though, our women's leader. We she do you think close. she's got a sizable, a sizable lead over second, but which we're not sure if it's Allie Mack at this point or if it's Ashley Brosovan. Um, but we do know that she has a sizable lead over so that second place she, position. She's hitting the dirt road now. She is going to absolutely smash this course record, I believe. It's tough for me to tell exactly how far away they are. But Sophia Lockley putting on an absolute dominant performance here. Never once looking vulnerable never once looking like she lacks experience. The collegiate Nordic skier looking like a seasoned pro. What an impressive performance. What an amazing Olympic athlete she is. And how exciting is this to have someone of her caliber coming into the sport, testing herself against some of the country's best athletes here on a big stage here in Palisades Tahoe at the Broken Arrow Sky Race. And Corinne and I will have an amazing view of her coming over this final hill. Yeah, we'll get to see Not her through long. our window here, just coming screaming down this hill. See Patty O'Leary through the window here. Yep, those and those bright, bright shorts coming down through through it. Uh, right behind, I believe, a Reno, a Reno Track Club guy, um, maybe Cam, someone that was, was on the Car VK. Carson, maybe? Was Carson, name, yeah. Think. Love it. Maybe Carson Levitt. I think there they've got go. a number of athletes in in the races here this weekend representing from Reno. Patty doing battle, taking the lead, making it competitive to the final step. And here we are with the women's leader. Sophia Lockley making her way down this final bit. Last year's winning time by Janelle Links was 2:14. We are well under that right now. She's going to be the
So if you're just joining us, uh, one thing to just reiterate is that it's a cold day here in the mountains. It looks like a crystal clear bluebird day. It is absolutely spectacular, though chilly conditions probably leading to these fast times or at least assisting these fast times here as we've seen. Oh, and here we have Allie McLaughlin. She is not pushing. Far I don't think she's going to have enough daylight to make that close happen, oh. but she is trying really hard. Allie has some downhill legs, and she is pushing this downhill to try to close any bit of a gap down to our lead woman, Sophia Lockley, up front. Yes, this is going to be incredible. They're both going to be well under the course records here. And here we can see Sophia Lockley in our window here, Corinne. I believe. Yep, that's Sophia Lockley Sophia there. Lockley being chased by. Is that, I think we can see her out our window. Yes, that I believe is Sophia coming down the fire road. Wow, wow, wow. I am so impressed. It's going to be a similar spread, I think, just like with, with Andy and Eli there. I bet it's going to be 20 or 30 seconds back to, to Allie Mack in second. But Sophia is charging so to the finish line right now. We are roughly 205 elapsed in today's race. Again, the course record is 214. Sophia Lockley is going to be 206, 207. Going to absolutely destroy this course record set last year by Janelle Lynx. Six, seven, maybe eight minutes. She's going to take off that time. And we are awaiting Allie McLaughlin. We'll see how big the gap is. Brandon's back. down there at the finish line, ready to welcome her towards that bell. What an exciting race for Sophia Lockley. Unbelievable. Performance of the day, no doubt about it. Sophia Lockley. Yeah, there's one, one person in front of her. Come on, Sophia. The crowd goes wild. Corinne and I can hear them through the window pane. We're sitting not far. Yeah. Sophia Stays on her feet. That's the biggest thing hitting that bell. It's so hard to stay on your feet afterwards. You're tired. Your quads yes. are shaking. Two she stays oh upright. Six twenty. Sophia Lockley taking eight minutes off the existing course record in a 14 and a half mile race. That is staggering, folks. That is absolutely unbelievable. Allie Mack making her way down, your second female. What an, I, I want to hear from, we'll get probably get this in the, in the post-race interview with Sophia. I want to know if she led wire to wire or yes. where she overtook Allie because we did not catch that on camera. And so I'm really excited to hear about that. Allie, and there's Allie. smile on her face. We can see her out our window making her way down the hill. She's also going to be well under the existing course record. Allie McLaughlin, your vertical kilometer champion. She was actually the VK champion, champion here last year as well and won the 52K last year. So she has a plethora of podium performances at the Broken Era Sky Race across all the different distances. Ali McLaughlin pushing Sophia Lockley to the end and will also put together one of the best performances of all time here at this incredible race. Ali McLaughlin, what a true champion she is. Yeah, I mean, she said she's fitter than last year. She said that, you know, fresher legs, not doing the 52K. Really cool to see her put together a super solid performance here in the 26k super solid performance with the vk win that good double this weekend she ha she has to be happy with this performance i'm excited to hear kind of about it from her post race she looks so happy oh my yes, goodness there's Mac hitting the grass unbelievable dog chased by a dog <laughs> dog escort to the finish line oh my God. <laughs> Uh, it might be her dog. <laughs> it's her dog, I think. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Allie just got the best escort yes. into the finish line. <laughs> That's, oh my the goodness. The joy, the joy. That's so cool. Wow. We need Millie and Leaf at the finish of your next race. There's nothing better than a good trail dog. Oh, that is an excited, no wonder that smile came across her face. She definitely saw that dog come, coming at her and couldn't wait to be greeted by it. Unbelievable racing here so far. I wonder if we could pull up the uh, the live results and maybe do a quick recap of the men's yeah, top let's 10 get, let's while we get wait that, for the third get that up. female to come in. Yeah, we'll and we think, a, we think our third female is Ashley 
Brasovin. We don't have confirmation on that, but I believe that is the case. We'll get we'll get confirmation on that. I'm pulling up some live results on my screen, and I will I will just share them with you all as we've kind of been tracking along. Really excited to kind of give you a recap of um, of what what happened in that men's race and what's happening currently in the women's race because that is getting updated as they cross the finish line. And while you pull that up, I just want to make sure our audience knows to stick around. We will definitely be cutting to an interview with our women's champion, Sophia Lockley, the story of the day. Oh, Don't go anywhere. Right. And Karen and myself are going to be sitting in these seats broadcasting for another hour and 20 minutes or so, so don't go anywhere. We've got a lot of awesome stories remaining to tell about the middle and the back of the pack. Of course, we've been focused on the professional ranks, but there are 750 runners out on the course right now representing all different skill and ability levels, so don't go anywhere. It looks like Corinne's got the results up now. Let's take through them. Yeah, but it's important to remember that the course changes a little bit every year. Last year, there was a detour at the start of these races just because of some construction going on the resort. So last year's course was shorter than previous years. We're back more on a standard course this year for the most part, although the VK was long last year, I believe, actually. Right. Back to the standard course this year. Um, Colorado came through in a big way. Colorado swept the men's race. Andy Wacker won in 150-11, followed by Eli Hemming in 151 even. Cameron Smith is another couple minutes back in 154-22. Sam Hendry in fourth, that Nordic skier out of Salt Lake City, mixing it up with the Colorado boys in 155-30, followed by the legend Max King in fifth. Super, super cool. Obviously, the rest of the top ten phenomenally well. Morgan Elliott in six, doubling back from that third in the VK. Ryan Becker in seven. Bajan in eighth. Really cool. That That's a new name for me this weekend. Super solid after the VK as well. Even kind of results there. Top 10 in both those. Kiernan Ney in ninth. And then Tyler Veerman, a new name for me, another Colorado guy, um, in 10th. See how many Coloradans there were in the top 10. I also want to just mention a, a cool little stat I'm just noticing. We have a 20-year age spread in the top 10 here. Sam Hendry, only 22 years old, coming in for a strong fourth place finish. And just behind him, Max King, 42 years young. Yep, and there's so 20 se year seven, spread between fourth and fifth here. Seven Coloradans in that, that top 10 group. So altitude maybe reigning supreme a little bit here yep. um, with Salt Lake in that mix and Bend in the mix. On your screen right now is Ashley Brasovin. We believe you're third place female. She was following Renee up the ladder but while Renee is an insanely strong fast runner has has insane road speed she's been racing on the road and then jumping into adventure racing um someone like Ashley who's been focusing on the trails more more recently um is going to have have the legs to move on that downhill I think a little bit better than Renee through yeah. some of that technical terrain so we believe third is making her way down to the finish line okay so we're going to take a quick break here do not go anywhere we will be back in just a second to welcome your third place runner into the finish line Anytime when I actually pace, I always request to pace the last segment because that is when you're most mentally and physically fatigued. And that is when you actually really need someone who actually be able to turn on, help you through. I want to be in that spot. My name is Michael Lee. I'm originally from uh, Hong Kong and I'm now here in San Francisco. My first exposure of running was actually in high school. Uh, I ran track, but uh, never done any kind of endurance running until the better part of my adult life. Uh, a friend of mine was doing Louisville Ironman and he DNF'd. Realized that he did 17 hours and he DNF'd. I'm, like, I'm intrigued, so that's how I actually got, in, uh, got into my first marathon training. I actually signed up through a program called Team and Training. Through that, uh, I Okay, we are back here in studio. Sorry to cut that short. We did not want you to miss the finish of Ash Ashley Brasovan, your third place finisher here at the Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K. Sorry to interrupt that little piece with Michael Lee. We will get back to that here momentarily, but we did not want you to miss the action here as Ashley Brasovan makes her way down the mountain chasing this podium performance here. Another awesome 
runner who I think kind of comes from that road and track background. Yeah, super successful into the road, trails. road and yeah. track athlete through college, transitioning onto the trails, kind of dabbling in some shorter stuff, but did her first like successful 50Ks last year, Speed Goat, I believe, believe being one of them, right. way too cool this year being another one. Um, super talented athlete, Quad Rock 25 miler, being a great race for her this year. So really excited to see more from her um, in the coming years. Yeah. And it does take time, you know, when you come from that road and track background, it takes time to develop the skills and confidence to race in the mountains. And Ashley Brassvin certainly has all the skills and tools to be a force on the scene as she is proving here with an amazing third place performance, looking so, flying. so strong, flying down the hill here. Such a great ponytail, great performance for her. She was in, in my breeze. top five pick. Was she in your top five I pick? I believe she was. I'll have to pull it up. We'll <laughs> see, see how, how the fantasy did. results. We had somebody in the chat say Leah that. Leah Yingling Leah crushed Yingling the 52K fantasy results. In the fantasy results. So. Arden Young crushed the VK fantasy results. The women, we are good destroying you all. Line. Yes, I know. It's <laughs> hilarious. I fancy myself an, an expert on the sport, and I have yet to crack the top 10 in any of these fantasy challenges. But here is Ashley Brasovan, hat in hand. Maybe the wind was blowing a little bit up there. She's moving so fast, the hat was not going to stay on her head. That's right, man. She is flying down the hill here. She's not leaving anything out on that course. She's She's pushing every single step all the way to the finish line. It's so cool to see these competitors just throw down all the way to that bell man i am so inspired i can't wait to get out this afternoon and do my own little push in the mountains here corinne and i have such a great job we get to just sit here and watch the action and share the great story of these amazing athletes with the world then take that energy out and go pretend to be runners ourselves occasionally. I know. I'm, uh, I'm excited to get our afternoon run in today, although <laughs> I'll be tired, I am sure. Here's Ashley hitting the grass, the final meters to that finish line. What a great race. What a great top three. Yeah, awesome race. Go ahead. Awesome uh, race. Like, so she'll be uh, finishing in next roughly 217-ish. Third and fourth. Nice job, Ashley. See if we can get a visual of that clock. Yep, and then as as things get set down there, we're hoping to get a finish line interview with the women's winner, Sophia Lockley, today. Um, oh, There's this is Tabor. Tabor, Tabor Hemming. This must be our fourth place female, Tabor Hemming. So she moved up from probably sixth or so at the ladder to finish fourth. Um, we're going to welcome her in to the finish line here at Palisades Tahoe momentarily. We're also getting set up at the finish line with Ethan Yep, it looks like we've got an interview ready to go with Ethan and Sophia Lockley at the finish line. So we're going to throw it back over there. Hi, this is Ethan again. I'm here with our women's winner, Sophia Lockley. From you're you're in Utah now, right? Yeah, originally from Maine, though. Excellent. She is a former Olympic Nordic skier. She won the race today in a killer, killer battle with Ali Mack. Walk us through your race a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I I hadn't run the course. I. This was really my first main trail running event, and so I, I kind of wanted. I knew Allie was a really strong runner, so I ran the beginning with her, um, and I felt really good. So I started to pick off some of the other men and tried to follow them. Um, and yeah, I really worked the climbs. I knew the climbs were going to be stronger than my descending, so I tried to make up a lot of time going up. Um, and yeah, just stay on my feet, which I didn't really <laughs> successfully. Yeah, do, you, you you've got a little bit of damage there. Uh, it did not really deter anything, so it was really fun. And and Allie's a hell of a downhill runner, so okay, yeah. the fact that you were able to make distance on her during the downhills yeah. is impressive. Yeah. So, as I said before, you're a Nordic skier. Tell us a little bit about how this compares and contrasts to that. Yeah, I mean, they're both very uh, cardio heavy, and I think like the crossover in that so sense is really uh, that's like what allows me to do this. Um, but they're very, they're like way more different. Like the today, the pain, everything. I don't know if one's harder th than the other, but this one, it's new to like have to really work the downhills. Um, in skiing, it's nice you get that break. And so there's a lot of, yeah, there's less crossover, I would say, than I thought, but equally hard and equally, equally rewarding. They're watching Renee. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you coming. Okay. Not a bad way to kind of start your trail running career with a big win here. In 10 words or less, tell us how awesome Broken Arrow is in Norwegian. 
Og det er bare kjempekult. Det hele scenen er, jeg har aldri vært her før, og det er veldig gøy. Thank you so much. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you very much. Congrats again. Is that Athlinks? And we are back here in studio. If you're just joining us, this is the fifth place women's finisher. Yeah, we missed we missed Tabor Hemmings finish during that interview, but here is Renee, a powerhouse former track and field athlete, top-notch collegiate athlete, still a fast road athlete out of Bend, Oregon. Awesome yeah. rep from her, fifth place. She, I think she has to be happy with that. That's a great performance for her in this field in particular, really showing up on the trails. No doubt, no doubt. So, awesome interview there from Ethan Veneklaassen with your women's <laughs> champion. Sophia Lockley. Yeah, one of our next women, we, we'll be looking for, no. no, Ashley's in, we'll be looking for Janelle Lynx, we'll be looking for Emma, Emma Cook-Clark. We'll be some of our next women to come through. Right now we've got um, five through officially, Sophia Lockley, Ally Mack, Ashley Brasovin, Tabor Hemming, and Renee. Yeah. So just about two minutes separating first and second. We're, we're looking next for, I think, Emma Cook-Clark, Rachel Tomazic. Um, that's that Merrill athlete out of Williams, Arizona. 19-year-old um, Tierney, Tierney Wolfgram. She's a, wow. a UNR athlete, I believe. Super well, solid you know. UNR athlete. Yeah. Might be in that mix as well. Sam Lewis, Olivia Amber. These are some of the next women that we are expecting down at the finish line. I think this is Rachel finishing right now, if I'm correct. She ran Rachel, the VK. Yeah. Um, this, I think, is Rachel Tomazic. Nice job, Rachel. Thank, Thank you, you, you for coming. Thank you for having me. So Rachel Tomazic finishing out her 26K in 2.21 and change. A great weekend of racing from Rachel, 29 years old out of Williams, Arizona. I believe that is our number six female. We'll, we'll be looking for Emma Cook Clark, Tierney Wolfram, Sam Lewis, Olivia Amber to be some of our next women to come in here. Who's got, ro who's got legs for the road on the way down is really the question. Yeah. And what happened to Janelle Lynx? That's one of the, the question marks so far. Last year's champion was in that sort of podium contention early in the day. We haven't seen anything from her for a little while. Here's Emma Cook-Clark on our screen, yep. making her way down on the road. Emma Cook-Clark, yep. surprise, second place. Well, not surprise for many of you, surprise for <laughs> us in the booth, let's say, let's, let's, let's say that. Emma Cook-Clark making her way down. Phenomenal former track athlete, phenomenal OCR athlete making her way to the finish. Emma Cook-Clark maybe grabbing her side there, maybe a side stitch going on. Um, That's how you know you're working for it, you know, right? You know you're trying Gotta hard, have right? have a good side stitch every once in a while. She's going to be our seventh place finisher here. And what a great weekend she has had. And also, yeah, one of those athletes who's using the Broken Arrow Sky Race to announce her arrival in the trail running sport. I believe we've heard that she has sort of an obstacle course racing background. She, no, she's, one, she's part of Nicole Maricel's Dream Team OCR group that was put together in the last 18 months to elevate women's OCR racing. So ah. she's an active OCR athlete. Incredible. What a great story. And another just great illustration of how versatile yeah, so like so like someone like VJ Jones or Nicole Marisol, who was 10th in the VK, they're going to be mixing it up in a variety of things this year because they all benefit each other. Um, one of their teammates, Ariel, was, I think, 4th in the 52K yesterday. Um, so they, they brought kind of a little OCR group here, kind of like Ryan Atkins and Lindsay yep, Webster being here year. in October, you know, show, showing up because racing is racing. And, you know, normally they don't have to do any obstacles or burpees during this. It has to feel great. It's so great. And yeah, I had Max King on the elite men's panel yesterday and we were talking about this earlier, just how versatile he is. And, you know, he, here he is still pulling out top five finishes as a 42 year old. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he is so dynamic. He is so versatile. He does There's Olivia Amber coming into the finish line. All right, Olivia, eighth place. San Francisco gal, Wisconsin gal, former Nordic skier, collegiate Nordic skier. 
Um, lives in the Bay Area, but is a good mountain athlete, part of that North Face contingent. Your good friend from childhood. There's David Kilgore <laughs> rounding out the uh, Triple Crown here, finishing up all three races. David Kilgore, an elite athlete from the Bronx, New York City, also manages the athlete team for on running. I think running. this is Sam Lewis. That's Sam an on Lewis kit coming in. in. Super talented athlete. Was in that top four or five group last year here. So we're starting to round out our women's top 10. I believe that was ninth. Looking for, once again, looking for someone like Janelle Lynx. Looking for um, Tierney Wolfgram might be one of those next athletes. And if Tierney comes in next, she's that 19-year-old. I believe she runs for UNR, that program that MK Sullivan's been a huge part of. So making her way back up the grass, trying to find our 10th place female. I think I see her coming down the road here. Tough to identify. Yeah, we'll, we'll kind of, our camera's gonna hold steady kind of on this finishing shoot to catch as many finishers as possible. So hopefully that you get to see your loved one make their way to ring that bell, finish their day out. Yep, and just a reminder here, folks, don't go anywhere. We are rounding out the women's top 10, but we are gonna be here for Tierney actually finished. We missed Tierney. Tierney Wolfgram finished eighth. Olivia Amber finished ninth. Okay. That puts Sam Lewis in tenth, okay. which rounds out our women's top ten. So let me just do a quick rundown Please. of our women's top ten, um, like we did for the men, just so that people know what happened out there. Star of our weekend, maybe. We're now her biggest fans. This happens every year. We become new fans of people. Yeah. Sophia Lockley took the win pretty decisively, two minutes ahead of Allie McLaughlin. Ashley Brasovin pushed that downhill, came in third. Tabor Hemming held on, fought through. Fourth place finish for Tabor. Great weekend of racing for her. Renee out of Bend, Oregon, you know, 40 years old, kind of rounding out that thing. 22-year-old wins. Renee nice job, in fifth, 40 Thank years you. old. Really cool to see her out there. Um, Ashley Tomazik in sixth. Emma Cook-Clark, the OCR athlete out of Canada, in seventh. Tierney Wolfgram, 19 years old, Reno, Nevada. I'm pretty sure she's part of that UNR, um, that Wolf Pack. Eighth place, Olivia Amber, San Francisco um, gal, ninth place. And then Sam Lewis, one of the on athletes out of Idaho in 10th place. Corinne, how fun was this? Our top 10 men and women are in. We're going to take a quick break here in studio. Stick with us. Still a lot of great action ahead. The uh, Schuylkill River Trail, also known as the SRT, it's, it's ideal for that Monday run. If anything's on your mind, let it loose and just enjoy these miles. A little Monday night therapy. It's been such a blessing to be able to just hang out with my friends and go for a run. It's more of a family than just the run crew. I'm not gonna say that running is life, but running is a huge part of my life. I love to do this thing. I love to run, I love to move my body. I love to be outside so much. When that is taken away from me, there's this grief. You have to learn how to re-walk and run again? But what am I supposed to do? The first thing that I thought to myself was that I don't know if I could do this again. Green Mountain has been this integral piece to my recovery and my return to trail running. Sky Race vertical, or I'm sorry, 26K race, getting my races mixed up today. My name is Dylan Bowman, one of your co-hosts today. I am now in studio joined by Mary Arnold from Strava. Mary, remind us of your title from Strava. You're new, I know, to the family, and I know you're in charge of events, but tell us what you do. Absolutely, and so psyched to be here. This is just such a fun weekend. Uh, so I'm Mary Arnold. I'm technically the Senior Events Manager of North America, um, but I like to think I just get a lot of stuff done. Yes, you do. Absolutely. And we had the pleasure to meet each other down in L.A. at the Camp Strava event just last week or two weeks ago, I guess. It, it feels like it was like three years ago, but it actually was just last week. Time is a flat circle sometimes. But oh, and it's very elastic. What a great event that was. I mean, I left there from Calabasas, California with a renewed sense of enthusiasm for the sport. And it seems like, uh, I mean, at least speaking for myself, I was very excited to see a sort of a renewed enthusiasm for trail sports from Strava. So maybe talk a little bit about 
Strava's approach to trail running specifically and some of the new sort of functionality that you have coming out? Well, first, I'm glad you had a great time. Uh, it was a super cool event that we had where we were actually launching a whole fleet of new trail products. Uh, trail has been one of the fastest growing uh, categories for us. As a matter of fact, like trail has grown 3x in the last two and a half years. So what we did was we dropped a whole bunch of new 3D mapping features, which are really great. We have video. Some folks may have seen the video in their feed that's rolling out across our fleet. Um, really great way to keep up the trail stoke and we have new categories to log activities in so we have trail uh we have trail run we have gravel bike we have mountain bike and we have e-bike so it's all about getting everybody outside comfortably safely uh plus our new trail networks so if you're here like in beautiful tahoe and you want to check out some trails we have a trail networks feature that you can use yeah, and you mentioned the, the growth of trail sports, and it's something that we have definitely felt as people who've been within the sport for so long, just seeing the growth of our sport, both domestically and internationally. And so it's so fun to see a brand like Strava embrace our sport, bring it in to you know their core product offering and bringing that to a wider audience. And the functionality is so cool. I mean, the mapping specifically, something Strava has been known for forever. You can do the route building and, you know, come up with all these creative routes and then export them and, and navigate when you're out in the trails. Obviously, community is a huge part of what Strava offers as well. Talk about sort of the initiatives that you guys have around sort of like activating, coming to events like this and just being more part of the community. Well, first, I would like to say we're all just really happy to see people in person, like yeah. actual in real life people. Um, so Strava is really a community of athletes. We are 100 million athletes globally. We're in 195 countries. We've logged over 7 billion activities. So we like to think we have a huge athletic community. Um, and this year, as we're getting back to racing, it's all about meeting athletes where they're at. And we know because we have the data that athletes are back out on the trails. And we love partnering with an organization like Broken Arrow that's really leading in the space in terms of innovation and racing. Just having the, uh, the Iron Face Challenge this week, I was like, wait, so this is running and rock climbing and there are helmets involved. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we were super excited to be here and be collaborating and just getting more people out on the trails in a real and authentic way. Um, I think we had 3000 athletes this weekend across all of the races yeah. and we had so many first timers and we really want to be here for our first time athletes. We love our folks that have been with us for years, but we want to say, come on in, we've got something for you. Yeah, incredible. And it's so, so inspiring. And there are so many people here who are getting introduced to our great sport for the first time. I listened to a podcast with Strava CEO, Michael Horvath recently, and he said that they had two initiatives coming up. One was trail sports and the other is storytelling. And a big mm -hmm. part of the storytelling is what we're doing right now. So talk about the storytelling element that Strava is trying to roll out with things like the live stream and the video products that you're offering within the app? Well, we really feel like our athletes, our community, are expert storytellers. Everybody has a story to tell, and that's part of why the video is so impactful. Um, I know we probably weren't the first to the fore with video, but uh, allowing folks to tell stories more authentically um, in their own voice and connect with larger communities is a great way to do that. And we, over the last two and a half years, have collaborated with a bunch of really great um, activists, athletes, community builders. We'll actually see some of those stories today, I think yeah. probably just in a few minutes. Um, folks that are really leading the charge in their communities uh, in all kinds of different spaces from social justice, environmental justice, um, connecting communities Communities. And that was part of the Camp Strava uh, initiative last weekend was having a terrific panel where we could share these stories. So we really want to elevate the stories of our uh, the folks in our community and we're excited to grow and learn more from everyone. I was going to ask you about that because you moderated that amazing panel. Maybe uh, tell us a little bit or give a few highlights or what your main takeaways from that amazing panel were. Well, we, um, just to catch everybody up, uh, at our Camp Strava event last week, we had a phenomenal panel of folks uh, led by Allison Mariella Desir, who is an athlete and activist from New York. We had the amazing uh, Kathleen Baker from Runners for Public Lands, and to round out the panel, uh, Jackie Hunt Brorsma, who is actually a South African athlete now living in uh, Arizona, and she is the current Guinness World Record holder for um, 
consecutive marathons completed by an amputee. So it was really a great conversation about how do we get everybody outside and how do we move past just welcoming people into the outdoors and we actually start to purpose build things for them. Um, Allison and Bryce and Kathleen had some really fantastic feedback about how we could begin to do that. And it really starts by listening, but listening has to be paired with action and that's part of what we're really committed to. Yeah. So talking a little bit about the events exposure now it's because it seems like something that's new for Strava and it feels yeah. so good for us as fans of sport to see not only this partnership with Broken Arrow but Western States the Tour de France a whole incredible yes. partnership mm -hmm. to have and you mentioned that now there's a hundred million users of the app talk about the growth of the product obviously there was some tailwinds with the pandemic. How do you maintain that growth? How do you maintain, you know, helping people to be enthusiastic about being fit and being active? And also just, yeah, talk about the events strategy that you guys have going forward. Sure. So I'm going to take that in a couple of parts. Sure. Um, so it's really, it, we have constantly innovated. We're constantly listening to our community. And actually, we do this really cool thing uh, a couple times a year called Strava Jams, where anybody can pitch an idea. We actually have a Jams week coming up. And uh, some of the new product features that we've just rolled out actually came from Jams just a couple of years ago. So we're always listening to the community and saying, all right, what could we really do? Um, I think it's probably been three years people have had their hand up for video, like, hey, right. video would be really cool. Um, I know 3D mapping. Uh, was part of those jam sessions. Clutch. Yeah, absolutely. And and also talking with our community and our team Strava athletes, our Strava ambassadors, and listening to them and figuring out like what would be helpful for you? Uh, what are some things that you would find useful? Um, so we're constantly iterating on that. We love collaborating with event partners that'll help bring us into communities where we might be online, but we're actually bringing that experience in real life. Yep. Uh, I think one of my favorite things we're doing this weekend here on site uh, was we have the live stream being broadcast outside on the patio. And um, just as <laughs> Sophia was coming in, there was this huge roar. And I was like, I couldn't tell if I was hearing it on the video feed, but it was actually <laughs> down with the tent. Uh, and there were like 300 people packed in front of the tent watching this live stream, writing, um, you know, congratulations, Sophia, on the kudos wall. So yes. it's really like, it's about um, connecting communities in meaningful ways through fitness and finding where those communities are connecting. And we were really lucky today. It just happens to be a beautiful day in Tahoe. Yes, so. terrific. Well, I think I speak for the entire trail running community when I say thank you for making this live stream possible. Thank you for joining us in studio. Thanks for everything that Strava does. Thanks for your commitment to trail running. And uh, it's great to spend time with you. Oh, thanks, Dylan. It's been awesome to be here and we'll be back at it with States next week. Yeah, and maybe before we go, I'll share an anecdote from our race director, Brendan Madigan, who you just mentioned the screen that you have in front of the Strava tent here in the vendor village where people are congregated watching. And uh, during the VK, he said that he walked by, you know, in between the million different responsibilities he has during race week and the beautiful visuals of the runners up on the ridge competing during the VK. And he was like, is that a car commercial or something? <laughs> He's like, no, that's actually us broadcasting our own race. And that was made possible by you and your team at Strava. So thank you very much. Oh, thanks, guys. We really love it and uh, excited to be here. Awesome. We'll be right back. Hi, my name is Paddy O'Leary. I'm an ultra runner living in San Francisco, California, but originally from Ireland. Today, I want you guys to meet one of the great community leaders in our space in Northern California. This guy brings on the next generation of trail runner and he opens up our sport to people who generally we don't see in our sport. Today, I want you all to meet and learn about Jose Cruz. I didn't grow up in the, the best home environment. Uh, the area where I grew up was kind of rough. Um, there was a lot of, I can say, domestic violence, gangs and drug use, alcohol abuse. Running changed my life. My name is Jose Salvador Cruz, and I live in Morgan Hill, California. Going to the gym and lifting heavy was kind of my outlet, and when running was introduced to me, it was, it was very positive. It was a different way to channel my negative energy. Right away, I got the runners high, and I understood what that was. Running means a lot to me. It changed my life. I mean, I met my wife, my beautiful wife, my beautiful daughter. Just before meeting Roya, things started to really change for me, and even after Ro meeting Roya, like, things got brighter, things got better, I felt better. And then 
running wasn't so much an outlet for negative energy, but it became this positive energy that is now going into my running. I mean, I think that that is very beautiful because it's this pure joy now. So Mount Madonna Challenge is a race that's been going on for now 46 years. 2019, I was told that there wasn't gonna be a race director or a race the following year unless someone filled that role. To me, that race meant a lot because I, I, I've had raced it for four or five years. Just having that energy, all the local runners that would come out, all the, the, the energy from the volunteers, from the race director. And so in 2019, I was taken under the old race director's wing taking over that race. I knew that the Mount Madonna was a nonprofit and so it benefits some local kids, but now we'll be focusing on kids from underrepresented communities to have them participate in a running camp uh, up in Shasta with Max King. To me, it feels like I'm, I'm making a difference in my community and for these kids, maybe because of this, it will change their outlook on life, kind of how it changed my outlook on life and maybe take, take a better route. Running has given me so much, has changed my life, and I hope that it does the same for anyone who picks up trail running. It's one of those sports that you can pick up when you're 20, when you're 30, when you're 40. It's something that can change your life, and you wouldn't even know it just by picking up a pair of shoes. If you are just joining us, we are still broadcasting here from the Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K. We are well past the top 10 to 20 men and women. We are going to be giving you a lot of great stories from the middle and the back of the pack. My name is Dylan Bowman here with Corinne Malcolm. Corinne, what a great day of racing here in Palisades Tahoe. Such an exceptional day of racing. It's beautiful on the mountain. It's going to warm up a little bit this afternoon. It's going to be good hangout weather. Not windy and snowy like yesterday. And throughout the rest of the coverage, right now we're up at the ladder, kind of watching the back of the pack come through that zone up high on the course. We'll be bringing you back down to the finish line, so hopefully you can catch some of your finishers coming in. We're going to be, we're going to be bouncing around the course, try to try to find and cover as many humans as we can. Remember, there are a lot of people out there. There are only so many cameras out there. Yeah, 750 total runners out there today. Only a small fraction of those were competing for the prize purse generously offered by the Broken Arrow Sky Race organization. So many great stories from the middle and the back of the pack. These runners are cruising down off the top here, traversing a little snow patch, and we're going to do our best to try and grab some bib numbers for you and start to tell some of the stories of these great Runners out there pushing themselves, challenging themselves. It's not about trying to make money or make a podium performance. All about just being out, challenging yourself, being in the mountains, doing it for the love. Best sport in the world. And yep. there is... And for those of you wondering if you can find your runner out on course, how do I find them? How do I track them? Where do I get them? That's a beautiful shot of Lake... Tahoe out in the distance, but if you're looking for your runner, if you're wondering, hey, have they finished yet? Hey, where might they be? If you go to the Broken Arrow website, because I can't drop this link in the chat because it gets automatically deleted as spam, um, you're going to go to the Broken Arrow website, you're going to go to the far right hand side of your screen, you're going to click on the runners tab, and at the bottom of the runners tab is a results tab. That will bring you to Athlinks, where all the results are aggregated the, all weekend for the VK, 26K, 52K, 11K. Um, from there, you can actually go, you can look at last year's results, but you can forward to 2022 and look at this year's results, which include live tracking some places on course and live at the finish line. So that's where you're going to find those live results. We can't drop that link for you in the chat, but it is linked through the Broken Arrow website. Karim, maybe let's talk about the Broken Arrow race as a whole now. I think for us, we've been here multiple times now, and 
it never ceases to amaze me. I'm so impressed by the quality of this event. It's not just races. It's kind of a festival of activities, a lot of clinics, a lot of panel discussions. It's a full weekend for everyone. There is something going on for everyone. There are book signings today. There was live, there's been live music every like late afternoon, evening. It's been, it feels like a festival atmosphere. It feels like a big, you know, for us, a big European race where you yep. go and you, you see new friends, you see old friends, you get to interact with the vendors in the vendor village. You get to listen to so, like such amazing talks and panels with athletes that are racing this weekend that are athletes that are racing western states next weekend there's a little something for everyone there's a kids race like what a it's, it's definitely very family friendly totally. feel yeah. and there's a lot of different things going on um, fairly easy to get to village. you know you can fly to sacramento or you can fly to reno you can enjoy the beautiful california sunshine absolutely a race to put on your bucket list and sort of does have a mixture between kind of a grassroots oriented event and kind of a big European, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sort of uh, circus type atmosphere. And I just love what Brendan has done. Brendan and their team have done to cater to both the elite professional ranks, giving them incredible opportunities to compete on a big stage while never losing sight of the importance and the just like inspiration of the people in the middle and the back of the pack. Brendan and his team operate with the philosophy that whether you're first or last, you are a rock star. Just get down that mountain and ring the bell and you have achieved something very, very special. What an awesome weekend it's been. Yeah, and it's so important to shout out the, the production crew here, our drone operators, our volunteer camera operators who are running around with gimbals trying to stay upright, chasing very, very fast runners around the course. Um, getting us these exceptionally cool, like the, the footage on your screen right now, like that is one of our drone operators up there on the mountain getting this done for us. So we want to give a big shout out to everyone that's working behind the scenes to bring you this coverage. It is not easy. It is not flawless. Things happen, but I feel like the, the images we've gotten out of this weekend are phenomenal yep. and i am so i feel very privileged to get to sit here in studio and watch yep. it and big shout out to scott rokas and his team who i'm staring at right now awesome awesome job guys so so fun just like yeah each year everything is improving and the kind of trajectory of the live stream operation the live stream evolution and bringing these race stories to the general public yeah, is thir amazing 30 people out on the mountain yeah. make bringing these images to you that is that's a huge team that's a huge yeah. team of all reinvested into the community by you know putting fifty thousand dollars of prize purse on the line that's to huge help support. For, a, for for predominantly a sub ultra weekend yes. more than anything that's huge it's, it's huge, huge for any distance but it's particularly huge for that sub ultra category and it's obvious but it bears mentioning that's the type of cash that you know could easily be folded back into the event that could easily become a line item in their revenue right but instead of doing that they reinvest it back into the community keeping a long-term orientation to the sport building that trust with the community and it's so so appreciated so big thank you to broken arrow for giving us the opportunity to be here again this year corinne and i are having such a blast and we are going to be here now for at least another 40 minutes. We are planning to stream through 1030 a.m. Pacific time. So stick with us. If you are still in the chat, let us know where you're from. Let us know what you're getting ready for. Let us know what your favorite storyline from the weekend was. We would love to interact with you here in the chat on the Broken Arrow Sky Race YouTube channel. Yeah, and if you're still waiting for your runner to finish, give them a shout out in the chat or if your runner did finish and you're proud of them give them a shout out in the chat um it's cool to see where people are running from where people ha have ventured from to get to this race so uh give them a little love in the chat and we'll shout them out Great. maybe pull up the uh live results here and we can maybe see if there's any other kind of notable finishes or storylines that we want to pull into our conversation here today we are just about two hours 48 minutes elapsed on a beautiful bluebird day here in the Sierra Nevada of California, the Lake Tahoe region. Again, 
It's been a chilly, chilly weekend here, but today made for very fast racing. We saw the course records drop for both the men and women. I think there's a little bit of controversy as to whether the courses are exactly the same. We will hope to get that confirmation. But either way, the course records were taken down today and incredible performances for the professional men and women. Yeah, I mean, just I, I'm kind of scrolling through things here. I'm, I'm going to say, you know, youngest female finisher thus far, um, kind of falling into the top 10 group was Tierney Wolfgram, finishing in eighth. Um, furthest distance traveled, let's say. I've got the women's field up right now. I'll switch to the men's field here in a second. I know there, there were some young guns in the men's race who will be kind of in that top 20 group, including a, like a 17-year-old that was getting shouted out in the chat. Um, there's a 22-year-old from, um, it looks like from Australia, Paige Penrose, um, finished 15 in the women's race, 22 years old, um, all the way from Australia. So kind of cool to see nice. a widespread of athletes, some more Canadians in that mix. Um, Gwen Rudy, who she must be doing the triple because she was in, I think, no, she was definitely in the VK. I don't think she was in the 52K in 27th there. Let me see what's and going on. Here up on, on our field. screen, we are way back. Mile seven or eight here, our back of the pack athletes here. So inspiring, drinking in the view, got the poles out, just crushing the mountain. And you know, for these runners, it's, you know, it's all, it's all about the personal challenge. It's all about being out in nature. And that's just the highlight, I think, for everybody who finds this sport. Obviously it's fun to compete, it's fun to push yourself, but Far superseding that is just the joy of just being in the mountains, being alone or with your friends and just, you know, putting a personal challenge on the calendar and going and doing it. That's uh, what makes us human, what keeps us alive in a lot of ways. Big thanks to Andy Anderson on screen here, one of our course marshals, just checking in with all these runners. Get, Andy get, Anderson's Andy, been don't get active. out of the way. Stay there. I've seen him around <laughs> All weekend. Look at him. He's looking spry yeah, after so, so working his of, butt off. Of note, um, Sophia Lockley finished 20th overall, um, which is, I think, impressive wow. in this in this field Let's in general. Let's see how that compares to last and year. And then um, Ollie, I don't, I'm not going to say his last name right either, um, out of Boulder, Colorado, 17 years old. He won the junior race at Mount Marathon, I think, last year is what I've been told. Um, finished 18th in the men's race, I believe. My screen just switched back to the women's field, um, but I believe um, 17 years old, finishing um, 17th or 18th in that men's field is pretty impressive. Young gun coming in there out of Boulder, Colorado. I just I, pulled up last year's results. It looks like Janelle Lynx was 22nd. So Okay, so very yep. comparable. Yeah. So, so, so cool here. And then again, for those of you trying to find your runners, this is a common question in the chat. Um, it's kind of hard to find your runner out there. You can go to the race website. You can go over to the right-hand side of that screen. You can click runners information or runners. You can scroll down to results. It takes you to Athlinks. You can select the 2022 edition of the race because it automatically populates the 2021 edition of the race. And you can find um, your runner that way. You can search by name and by event. That is the best way for you to find where your runner is on course and where if your runner has finished or not. As we look back up the mountain here, we've got some of our middle and back of the pack runners here doing some tricky descents on the snow. This is a skill that takes some practice to develop. It's often kind of a mixture between jogging, falling, and skiing. It's a great time to have your poles out if you brought your instruments with you up on the mountain. And uh, yeah, another fun variable here of Broken Arrow Weekend. You got all different mix of terrain. You got the faster, flatter, runnable stuff. You've got sort of the wider serviced roads. You've got the super steep technical. You've got the snow patches. It really keeps you on your toes the entire way. Yeah, not too snowy this year. Um, definitely more snow than the October edition of this event. But in 2017, it was a very, very, very snowy edition. They had a fixed line lower down on the headwall climb because it was completely snow. Um, Adrian Ballinger's team put that fixed line yep. in for the race that year. Um, it was sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. 
but that flat patch of snow is actually really hard to traverse because you don't have momentum on your side. You're not kind of like sliding yeah. down <laughs> it. And so it's a very sloppy section, particularly as it warms up later this morning. It's probably firmer for our front runners. It's going to be a little bit sloppier for um, our mid and back of the pack. And that's going to be a, a short but probably frustrating section for many people. And yes. again, this is on the ski hill here at Palisades Tahoe. So this race is staged right here in the village. It makes for a really fun atmosphere. Everything's really centralized. And for people like Corinne and myself who are not racing, there's a slew of other things to do. We've been getting out on our own little runs and adventures. Yeah, tr of... Truckee's down the, down the road, yeah. Tahoe City's down the road, Lake, Lake Tahoe and Donner Lake are right there too. If it's wasn't quite as warm and wintry feeling this weekend. <laughs> um, you could be out there paddle boarding or swimming. So it's uh, there's a lot to be there's a lot to get done, to be done, to to have fun with the whole family here yeah. in the Tahoe Basin. Yeah, we went and had dinner in Tahoe City last night in North Lake. It was such a beautiful night on the water, though chilly, very chilly. The lake effect. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah I great, wear. great conditions for running though all weekend, even if it was a little chilly and blustery, really, really fast conditions as we've seen with the finishing times through yeah. all these races. We had to finish out, we had to figure out how to turn the heat on at our Airbnb yesterday because yeah. the room, the internal room temperatures were reading like 50 degrees. So yeah. got the heat cranking in there a little bit weird for June. We're going to be wishing it was this cold next weekend when we're sweating yep. profusely during Western States, but you know, what a perfect, what perfect running weather. I'm a little bit jealous. Yeah, well, I, this is just popping into my head now, but I think to recap, we saw of the three races, the three main races, the VK, the 52K, and the 26K, at least four of those six course records went down. The VK course has changed a little bit. Um, yeah, it kind of fluctuates. It's going to fluctuate every year depending on how much snow we have on course. And last year there was construction at the base that I think made the VK a little bit longer because we kind of had to go around the construction. So it sounds like we're back on the more standard VK course this year. Um, so still s just super impressive times yeah. all around. But yeah, the course record's going down in the 52K and the 26K, a mixture between the level of competition and the great conditions that we've had this weekend for racing. And so, so entertaining to be a part of it. I know I am definitely inspired to get my own little jog in this afternoon. Yeah, I was going to say, you going for a shakeout? You just ran a 50-miler not that long yeah. ago, so shaking the legs out this week. Yeah, the 50-miler I ran last weekend was my attempt to make sure that I wasn't too jealous of everybody racing over the next two weeks while you and I sit in studios and share the amazing stories of these races with the public. We do a lot more ultra talking during June than we do ultra running, it turns out. I know. It's been an absolute joy to do it with you, Corinne. And uh, we've got more to come from our little team here. These drone tracking shots that you all are getting to watch near the finish line are just so, so cool. I feel so fortunate that, you know, really, I mean, Jameel Curry with the Air Viper crew yep. really like paving the way for some of this live coverage. And then Scott's team here, Scott Rokas' team here, you know, saying like, I think we can do it. Let's make it happen. We had proof of concept last year. We're back again this year. Western States joining that boat. For being in the U.S. where we don't necessarily have the best cell coverage in some of these mountainous regions, it's a little more challenging than some of the live coverage in Europe where you have better, but just better cell coverage in general. Like to get the quality of images all over the resort like we've been able to get all weekend is so so impressive and the same thing's gonna be able to happen this year with some new technology at western states like i don't think people realize how challenging it is to get the like the quality yep. of images that we are getting to you all with the budget that we have yep and there's liam lonsdale who just finished more people cruising down the hill here we just had a if we wanted to cut to input number 15, I think this will be fun for people to see who are joining us remotely. You can kind of see what the finish line vibe and atmosphere is like. If we can get to camera number 15, I think it would be fun to show people. Because right now it kind of turns into a big social hour after everybody finish or after, you know, the, the top runners finish. It turns into a big spectator um, social vibe there in the vendor village on that big green lawn at the finish line. And uh, just a great, great atmosphere to be a part of, whether you're racing or not. 
Yeah, yeah well, yesterday after the 52K, they were definitely handing out beer at the finish line. It might be a little bit early yet today to be handing <laughs> out beer at the finish line. But that was the first thing into the hands of a lot of the 52K runners yesterday there. So uh, curious to know you get the, the runner in that chair and if they're being given a... Oh, that was Lauren Fleshman who just rang the bell. Oh, Lauren yes. Fleshman, Wazell. Um, I, I want to call her the captain. I feel like she's a big part of that Wazell team. She's been the coach of Little Wing, coaching athletes like Collier Lawrence, who's come from a, the ah, track background yeah. onto the trail. She actually had a hamstring injury recently, and that's why she's not here this weekend. But so good to see Lauren Fleshman making that jump from uh she's was a phenomenal track athlete did a little bit of road running as well and now to see her joining the trail community is just really really cool we'll be looking out also for alicia montano um to be joining us at the finish line here soon i would imagine as well yep yeah so cool to see lauren fleshman here moving on to the trails we've seen kara goucher do a little experimentation on the trails as well and I think it's, again, just illustrative of this current moment in the sport. Our little community, what was super, super niche five, ten years ago when we were getting into it, Corinne. Now it's attracting people. It's... My name is Nicole Nipper. I'm 27 years old from Minnesota. I started running in high school and competed in college and I found ultra trail running as a grad student. I gravitate towards deeper stories and I'm not great at small talk. There are a lot of people in the trail community that have been through dark times, that have had trauma in their lives um, in, in one way or another dealt with anxiety or depression and unfortunately eating disorders are certainly prevalent throughout. From a very young age I wondered if I would make it to 20 and I think that's that's carried throughout my life. Uh, even though I'm 27 now there's still some of those really darker times where you question whether whether you're gonna make it. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's really hard. I know I'm not the only one either. And you know, that, that's when you really need other people to remind you uh, that you're loved no matter what. Coaches in my life have made the biggest difference, uh, particularly when I was growing up. I wanted to, in some ways, give back by being a coach and realizing how, how much responsibility there is in being a coach, that's, that's probably the scariest part of it, is knowing how much influence you have over kids during really tough times in their lives, but recognizing the most important part in that pursuit is to be, just be there and be loving. Even if there are things they don't want to talk about, just being there and showing up. Uh, that's what I wanted to do for them, and I hope that creates a safe enough environment that if they are struggling, or if they're celebrating something, that they can bring all of that to, to me. It's such a hard time growing up, and to have just another person to be in your corner, to love and accept you, that's, that's what I want to be. And not just for the, the kids that I, I come into contact with with coaching, but really everybody. What matters is doing our best every day, and sometimes our best is just getting out of bed, and that's, that's enough. I love to do this thing. I love to run, I love to move my body, I love to be outside so much. When that is taken away from me, there's this grief. I have to learn how to read, walk, and run again? But what am I supposed to do? The first thing that I thought to myself was that I don't know if I could do this again. Green Mountain has been this integral piece to my recovery. 
and my return to trail running. And we are back here in studio. Welcome back to the 2022 Broken Arrow Sky Race 26K. I am Dylan Bowman, joined by Corinne Malcolm. That was an awesome little piece there presented by Strava. A little action with your co-host from the Trail Society podcast, Hillary Allen. After that story, we've got some people shouting out their runners in the chat. Corinne, what's going on there? This is a lot of a lot of first or second trail races out there, which is, I think, so exciting. What a, what a cool event to draw people into their first ever trail race, their second ever trail race. So Perfect. Portland, Oregon got shouted out. Um, Bryn um, Miklup from Portland, Oregon, 14th female today, second trail race. Um, it sounds like um, Karina Anderson, 22nd female, first trail race. Um, really, really cool. Like very, very cool story. Um, Colorado Buffalo runner, um, had childhood leukemia. So proud. Oh, it's her wow. mom shouting her out. Linda, your daughter's amazing. All right, Linda. All right, First Karina. trail race. Heck yeah. So a CU buff. There are a bunch of One CU of the buffs. The, the Hemmings are CU buffs yes. as well. One of the great track cross-country programs in the United States. So probably a bright future ahead for Karina, your 22nd overall female in her first trail race. So, so impressive. And to yeah, ni 19, point. 19 wow. years old. We've got a bunch of 19 years. we got a bunch of college runners in there with, so with UNR represented with CU Buff. Did Buffalo we establish represented. how old Sophia is? Sophia is 22. 22 years old, just like Sam Hendry, her teammate there at the University of Utah Nordic skiing program. So a lot of young, young runners. The future is bright in the professional ranks. Yep. Lots, lots of 20, of lots of 19 year olds, lots of 20 somethings, lots of 30 somethings and 40 somethings though too. Yeah. So it's really, really cool. We saw that great video earlier of an 80 year old in the 11 K yep. like this sport is for everyone. We had, you know, the, not, not only the kids race, but then in the VK, we had entire families out there. So I just want to stress that like, there's such a wonderful like smattering of family participation, um, teen athletes out there. We had a bunch of uh, local youth Nordic skiers in the VK um, throwing right, down. Yeah. Like, I I'm just thrilled that when events like this come together, they offer such great variety of terrain, trail length, distance. That there's there's something for everyone, and I think that makes it more approachable. Yeah, there's David Lamb intro. from San Francisco. Shout out David Lamb. David Lamb. But yeah, this race really has become just such a world-class event it's only been around for maybe six seven years but broken arrow really is an important race and again just to stress something we've said a million times definitely recommend to all our viewers to come come to this race eventually whether to test yourself on the course or just be part of the electric atmosphere here in the village it's really worth your time you can always stick around one extra week for western states also both Corinne and myself are going to be doing that. We get to spend a full another week here in the Sierra Nevada. A couple of days of rest before we launch into more media work and uh, commentary duties around America's oldest 100-mile race coming up in just about a week. More aerial, beautiful drone footage as we see some of our middle of the pack runners. Just look at, I love the, when you get that train of runners just like chugging along together like that. I think yep. it's just incredibly beautiful. It makes it. How much fun are they having? They're having, too? I hope they're having fun. <laughs> yeah. They should, they've, they've crested the high point of the course. They know they're making their way to the finish. They're on flowy, flowy single track right now. Maybe they're running with friends. But they say that poet. They say that running is poetry in motion. And when you get those aerial shots of like a train of runners moving along this terrain, like to me, that is the case. It is poetry in motion. No doubt. Very well said. Traversing that kind of talus slope there. What a beautiful shot here. Going back to the chat just above Linda's congratulations to Karina, her daughter. We've got Elise McKenna giving a shout out to her old man saying happy Father's Day, Dad. Elise, throw your dad's name in the chat so we can give him a proper recognition. But yeah, happy Father's Day to everybody watching. Happy Father's Day to everybody out on the mountain celebrating so many great storylines of amazing parents, both mothers and fathers in our sport, competing at the highest level. I love that. Have, also, having a chat. Yeah. That runner having a chat with the camera there yep. for a second, moving their way along the course. Lots of jackets out there, lots of gloves out there. Definitely a cool a cool day for the runners yeah. making their way along the top of the course there. Yeah, and I mean, this is probably 
what, maybe six or seven miles into the race. So we've had the lead runners through the finish line now, what, more than an hour ago? And yeah, more than an hour ago for both the men and women, and we still have people that are only six or seven miles into the race. So again, it's the type of sport that you don't have to be some elite athlete to come and compete. Just put a backpack full of snacks on your back, a what? jacket, some poles, have yourself an adventure. Yeah, I think the difference between even like the road marathon scene and the trail and ultra scene is that there feels like there's less separation. And I don't mean maybe in time. Time back exists in any of these sports, but it feels like there's less separation on the ground between all the runners as, as far as like the elites and pros are out there mingling with everyone else. They're hanging out with their friends, having a cold beverage after the maybe having a warm beverage after the race yeah. today. <laughs> their dogs are joining them at the finish line. Their kids are out here. I think that yeah. like to me, Trail and Ultra exemplifies that nature where there isn't this big separation um, bet between like the, the upper echelon of the sport and everyone else. I think that's Natalie Gelfi there rocking her trails in tarmac oh, yeah. top. Natalie Gelfi, a mother of two. Looks like she's just wrapped up 26K herself. So even though it's Father's Day, big shout out to all the mothers out there on the course as well. What an awesome drone shot this is. <laughs> Following one of our runners down the last miles of the service road here on the ski resort, looking up towards the escarpment, the high point on the Western States 100 course. This truly is sacred territory in our sport. Being here in Palisades, Tahoe, what a gift. Yeah, and we're going to be bouncing around between feeds because the scenery is really, really exceptional and really, really beautiful. So we're not going to see every single runner come across that finish line feed. We're not going to see every single runner out on course. There are a lot of runners, it turns out. Um, it's kind of a, an impossible task to, to get every single person in there. But we're trying our best. So we'll be bouncing around, trying to give you some aerial footage of these runners coming in, give you that finish line feel as well. So uh, have patience. Yep. Enjoy the scenery. Take it all in. Um, that's what we're here for. So just to kind of reset here, we are now three hours and 10 minutes or so into the 26K. This is the final race of race weekend here on a beautiful Sunday morning. It has been an action-packed weekend, starting with the Iron Face Challenge, a new race here as part of the Broken, Area, Broken Arrow series of events. A little Via Ferrata action yeah. for, for those of you. So they've got to they've use a harness and some locking carabiners and a helmet and make their way across the the uh, the rocks the rocks and cables of that route yeah. and, and get a run in before and afterwards yeah and it's the type of run where you have to stop and put a harness on and a helmet and then traverse kind of a semi-exposed via ferrata section i was talking to max king who won the race this year in its inaugural running max king of course doubling back for a fifth place today but he was saying there isn't any super exposed sections so it's not something that's super scary or crazy as we you, cut yeah, to another you can, amazing you can come visual. you can come just experience the via ferrata it runs it runs all summer here yep um you can get out get out on that you don't even have they, they will drive you up there tram you up there you don't yep. have to run up to the via ferrata like our iron face um athletes had to do um back on friday so if you if that's something that you're interested in and you're in the village check it out yeah i was chatting with adrian ballinger at camp strava last week as well about the Via Ferrata and Iron Face event in particular. And he and his team at Alpenglow Expeditions, which is based here in the Lake Tahoe region. It's a world-class mountain guiding operation. Adrian himself is a multi-time summiteer of Mount Everest among many others. He's done it without oxygen. And they also have a great kind of local mountain Canada and uh, so awesome to see a, a mountain guide out pushing it here 
on and, this local mountain. Um, his wife, um, Emily Harrington, is out on the 26K course, All and they right. just recently announced that she's pregnant. Yes. So she's out. Let's she's get out an on the 26K course. She's come through um, Siberia. That's one of the top checkpoints up there. So she is um, still moving out on the course. Um, it'll be cool to see her come in eventually. It will, she'll likely not come in while we're while we're still on air, but um, yeah, Emily is out there, out on course. Um, I think they're expecting in yep. November. Pretty cool to see her out in the mountains. Yeah, and Emily Harrington is a you know, generational talent as a rock climber. Now doing a lot more mountaineering, alpinism, ton of big expeditions as part of the North Face team, and. Uh, yeah, awesome to see them growing their family. More finishers coming through here. Let's see if we can get a bib number. Tough to see here. If you can ID any of these people, please do let us know in the chat. Yes, takes off one hat, puts on the finisher hat. He earned it. Ring and the bell, ring and the bell galore. Lots of finishers coming in right now. It's pretty satisfying to hit that bell by the way. Yeah, That's I'm going nice. to have to do it myself someday. 52K Although for you I next year. I really do like doing Oh, yeah, I could do the 52K. You could. You got you got a day off. Yep, or the Iron Face. And there we have race director Brendan Madigan with the straw hat. We saw him briefly. Welcome. Brendan Madigan, one of the great, great characters in the sport, a true leader, a local um community builder, business owner here in the Tahoe area. If you come, make sure you check out Alpenglow Sports in North Lake. Brendan has been the owner of that business and really somebody I look up to in the sport as a yeah, community builder and a business person and somebody who really gives back to the community. So big shout out to Brendan Madigan, the race director here. He has been working tire tirelessly. He's been limping he's probably, around He's probably the sick of us too because yes. we've, been, we've been pestering him for the last <laughs> couple of weeks via text and email about various things. So I'm sure he will be ready to take a big exhale yeah. um, when today's activities are done. Yeah, and much of this is his vision. You know, he sort of founded this race seven or eight years ago. I can't even remember now. Ethan Veneclausen, who we've seen doing some of the finish line interviews. He was part of that founding team as well, but they really have been able to Out of the great state of the great country of Canada, this is Sue here too, because you've got people that are in town for this and will stay all the way through next week to experience yeah. Western states on the other side. Like to me, that is so insanely important to be able to combine all those things together and create, you know, a 10 day festival essentially up here in Lake Tahoe. Yep. Back to the finish line here. Another trails and tarmac hat there. Chatting with Brendan. She looks happy. Big smiles after an awesome 26 K adventure on the mountain. Cold beverages galore. I'm sure they're happy. Rehydrate. They're happy they did not have to repeat that climb like our 52k runners yesterday, where right. they had to they had to double up on this loop. Um, you know, it's kind of nice to to know that there is a downhill to the finish <laughs> that you don't have to go around around the mountain one more time. Got a question about where the results are, Corinne? We can't put the link in the chat. But if you go to is if it you go if you go to the if you go to the website if you go to the race okay. website the Broken Arrow race website not not ultra sign up go to the Broken Arrow race website on the far right hand side of your screen there's gonna be a runners tab like a runners info tab at the bottom of that runners info tab there's gonna be a results tab hit that results tab it's gonna bring you to the Athlinks website it's gonna automatically load the results from last year 2021 but you can change that to 2022 and that will give you that. Also, our admin folks came through and the results link is now live. Also in the chat right now, thank you Broken Arrow Damn. Sky Race admin team because we cannot drop that link in ourselves. Um, it automatically deletes it. So that live results link is now in that chat for you as well. Yeah, and even if your runner hasn't finished, you can type their name or bib number in and you can see where their progress is along the course. Yep. There are a few spots to check in with your runner basically out there. there are not too many. And it's not a perfect system. They might get missed, but you'll be able to know if they finished and you'll be able to know potentially where, where about where they are on the course or at least where they've come through so far. Corinne, my neck is starting to cramp from looking up at this amazing display <laughs> of live feed cameras that we have here. 
These are the injuries that we deal with as professional commentators here in the booth. Yeah, we have we have up to 16 <laughs> camera options running at any one time, trying to find runners for you all out on course. Um, they moved us closer to the screen today, so we could see a little bit better. But you know, it's I think I think you all at home get the most enjoyable experience because ideally we get as many of your runners on screen as possible, um, and you're you know viewing from whatever comfortable location you're at. We hope you're having a great Sunday, a great Father's Day here as we make our way into the summer months. It feels so good. This is when trail running season really does start in earnest. Great time to plan your mountain adventures. Kiddos we are now coming across the start line with, with Dad and yes. Mom there. And how about that? Ring that bell. <laughs> yes. yes. He, they carried one. Kid that across is that came back Day for the vibes. second kid. Oh, that's oh, Chris. Oh, no way. That's uh, from calling back to our video. Uh, so if you're just joining us, make sure you go watch the early part of the race. Where oh, that's so great. He's one of our feature stories. Chris, yeah. congratulations. Happy Father's Day. I'm so glad the kids were there to welcome him in. Wow, wow, wow. Good vibes galore. We are now... Three hours and 20 minutes elapsed. We've got about 10 more minutes here in the broadcast today. Elise, Elise McKenney got back to us. Her dad's name is Michael. Michael McKenney, 69 right. years young. She's so proud of you. Michael, we're waiting for you to, to make your way around the mountain. I haven't Gosh. checked to see if you've finished yet, but Michael McKenney, happy Father's Day. Making me emotional. My wife is here with me at eight months pregnant. I'm about to be a dad for the first time myself. I've actually gotten a few <laughs> premature text <laughs> messages from people saying happy Father's Day. And I was like, you're like, not yet, not, man. Not quite yet, but thank you. But it is uh, starting to get real. And it's so, so cool to see these families out here having a good time together. Yeah, I'm excited for the, the next, you know, next year at the next race where we're, we're you and Harmony are there. Oh, and Baby Debo. Baby Debo's in tow. <laughs> <laughs> baby Debo in the long shorts and the tall socks. Yes. Ready to rage. Yes. We won't be able to do the live stream of the kids race because you'll be out there. Right. You'll be out there running the kids race. Yeah, there is also a kids race here at Broken Arrow. Uh, an adorable little competitive challenge for the youngsters here. I some one of the parents straw it yesterday. Jesse Thomas, I think, straw it. <laughs> yes. It was, you know, 0.6 miles. I'm pretty sure the kids had a good time. Don't Strava it, doesn't count. Yeah. So uh, cool to see the kids race uh, just go so smoothly yesterday for everyone. We're gonna take a quick break off our finish line to go to an aid station that's um, in memoriam of a local runner who passed away a couple years ago who has run this race, who's run a number of hard races. And this, this aid station has been named in her honor for Julie. Seeing runners come through. This is their last aid station on course um, before they make their way down to the finish. And that's a pretty special place for for that honor to be to be deemed for that runner. Yeah. It is all about the community, you know. I don't know Julie, didn't know Julie personally, but it is all about the community and here, especially in the North Lake area, the people behind the scenes are all locals, you know, that put this thing together. And uh, they're here to show off their backyard, welcoming people from all over the United States, international runners as well, honoring their local people present and passed away, Julie being one of them. Cool to see runners making their way through there. Most of these runners now just have that downhill to the finish they've got to feel good about that getting here there have been years where this entire section that these runners are on is completely snow yep so it's kind of i'm sure they're they're grateful that they're on some rocks um although it, Thank you, everybody. it definitely it looks snowed really up there nice. yesterday it looks really nice out there people seem comfortable out there look at this and we are back to mile eight on the course we still have runners going up they're Still approaching the high point of the course essentially here. So they're they're working their way up to the very tippy tippy top of the course. Making their way that's not a fun climb. I've done that climb. It's a big pu punch in the gut, particularly if you're not prepared yeah. for the altitude. It's much steeper than it appears here on our camera also. 
But how awesome is this? As back we to the finish line for you all. Back to the finish. We are sort of coming near the end of our broadcast today. Well, Corinne and myself will get to walk out of our studio here and go enjoy the vibes of need, the finish I line atmosphere. I need more coffee. I need more. I need a snack. I need, I need some more, more coffee. Caffeine, hydration, coffee. And we get to go on our own adventures. It'll be a little bit warmer than my run yesterday, for sure, which I'm looking forward to. It's the coldest I've been in months, probably, yesterday morning. Um, the Tahoe 200 is going on right now in the Tahoe Basin area, and I cannot imagine how cold those runners have been the last two nights, um, making their way around that 200-mile course. So there's so much going on in the Tahoe Basin. I'm happy that we get to be here comfy inside at Palisades yeah. Tahoe, welcoming runners in for the final race of the Broken Arrow weekend for 2022, the 26K. From a VK to a 200 mile race, it's all happening here in Tahoe right now. You could do a little bit of everything if you wanted to. Actually, <laughs> or a lot of bit of everything. I had a friend who's gonna run the VK and then work the aid stations for the Tahoe 200. So you can experience a little bit of everything if you play your cards right out here. Yeah. Ringing the bell, more finishers coming through here as we approach the three and a half hour mark elapsed. Runners left the village here at 7 a.m. sharp this morning when it was 29 degrees Fahrenheit. Ice on the car windows. We saw lots of gloves and arm sleeves and jackets at the start. Um, lots of snow up high on the course. Athletes looking a little bit warmer outside now. People camping out in their va vans and in their tents doing having to go the extra mile to stay warm. And uh, now the frost is breaking and summer is truly arriving here in the Sierra. Not a moment too soon, especially for two Pacific Northwesterners sitting here in the studio oh, with We're you. so excited to get out oh, in the sunshine because we've gonna, been robbed of it for months in the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to be basking in the sunshine for the next week and during so, my stay here in California. And so while we will be leaving you here shortly, runners will be coming in for hours and hours. Um, there's a seven hour cutoff for this race. Um, so if you're out in the village, keep cheering. If you're at home, keep cheering because um, people will be still running for quite a little bit. No doubt, no doubt. And uh, just to reiterate, you can click that link in the chat from the Broken Arrow Sky Race account. That'll get you to the live results link. Even if your runner hasn't finished, you can type in their last name or bib number and you can find their progress along the course. So make sure you do that. Stream of runners coming in to ring that bell. Um, finish Happy line. finishers coming Arch. in. Fist bump for the RD there. That seemed like some high praise going to the RD there. Happy runners. How great is it? Brendan Madigan greeting everybody across the finish line as a new RD myself. That was my highlight from the Gorge Waterfalls race earlier in the year. MCing the finish line, figuring out where everybody came from. Just the you know, diversity of hometown and how far people had traveled to be part of it. I'm sure it's just so, so fun for Brendan to see what he's created here. Yeah, what what a wide reach this little little pipe dream of a race now has. It's, yeah. I don't think anyone imagined this six years ago, seven years ago. Yeah. And and here we are. I think this is a feature of the June the June trail world in the US and it's it's so cool to see people coming out and throwing down in every single distance this weekend. So again, if your runner has not yet made it into the finish line, you can follow along. Um, you can follow their progress by hitting that results link that was dropped into the chat on YouTube by the Broken Arrow Sky Race account. It should be highlighted in yellow for you. Um, that's the Athlinks page, and you can search for your runner by bib number, by last name, by first name, I believe. Like it's, it's pretty. It should be pretty easy to find your runner there. Um, either results from the other races this weekend or the current live results for the 26K. As we make our way to the end of the broadcast today, Corinne, maybe let's just do a quick last recap of our podium finishers here in the men's and women's races of the 26K. It was action-packed, high drama, 
high suspense and a lot of interesting stories. Catch yeah. us up. Fast, fast races. We'll do the top three men and the top three women. Um, we had great performances out of Andy Wacker. He won the men's race, followed by Eli Hemming in second and Cam Smith in third in the women's race. Sophia Laukley blew our minds, winning the women's race, followed by um, Allie Mack doubling up on her VK win on Friday, followed by Ashley Brosovin in a solid, solid third place performance. Okay, folks, so we are getting to the end of our coverage here from the 2022 Broken Arrow Sky Race. What an incredible weekend it has been. Corinne Malcolm, maybe just close us off with some of your personal highlights. I think my personal highlight was getting to see people from all walks of life, from all parts of the country, from all parts of the world, descend on the Tahoe Basin and show up in various ways for all sorts of distances to get the most out of themselves, to still be getting the most out of themselves out there and to be a spectator, to be a, a fly on the wall for that was, was truly special. Yep. I probably have only run a total of 10 miles over the three days that I've been here, but what an awesome weekend it has been for me. Some highlights, the incredible battle for the top two men at the Vertical K. Make sure you go back and watch that live stream as well here on the Broken Arrow YouTube channel. Sophia Lockley absolutely smashing the women's race today. I can't wait to follow her on Instagram as soon as we get off this live stream. You and I both had some awesome panels that we hosted here in the village yesterday during the 52K day. And it's just been an awesome, awesome experience. So we are gonna end our coverage there today. Again, one final big thank you to Strava for making our coverage this whole weekend possible. It has been an absolute pleasure to host this live stream. For Corinne Malcolm, my name is Dylan Bowman. We'll catch you soon. Anytime when I actually pace, I always request to pace the last segment because that is when you're most mentally and physically fatigued. And that is when you actually really need someone who actually be able to turn around and help you through. I want to be in that spot. My name is Michael Lee. I'm originally from uh, Hong Kong, and I'm now here in San Francisco. My first exposure of running was actually in high school. Uh, I ran track, but uh, never done any kind of endurance running until the better part of my adult life. Uh, a friend of mine was doing Louisville Ironman, and he DNF'd realized that he did 17 hours and he DNF. I'm, like, I'm intrigued, so that's how I actually got in, uh, got into my first marathon training. I actually signed up through a program called Team and Training. Through that, uh, I was introduced to a mentoring system. They have professional coaches that actually teach you through how to get ready for your first marathon. It, it was both hard and exhilarating. Turn a corner and seeing that final finish arch was just, oh my God, I can do something harder than I thought I, I was able to. Right after I finished that marathon, I went back to the program and I said, I want to be a mentor. So I want to actually help other people experience what I experienced. My first 100, 100 mile race, I had six people carrying me. Having the people there was kind of more like a security blanket. I, and I see that very common when people doing their first big expeditions, they, they surround themselves with a ton of people, then the more must be better. But really, what, what you ran up having is too many cooks in the kitchen. And, and having somebody who really know how to lead and how to have gone through that experience, they will be able to turn around and actually set you right in the right space, say the right thing to you at the right time. Um, and, and so that was what motivated me and also friends while I was training, that it's their turn, they helped me, and it's my turn to land a hand. But next to crossing the finish line myself, helping someone else through the finish line was the next best thing. When I actually ran uh, my first 100 miles, one of my pacer, he went out a half a mile to film me coming in. I, I don't remember the finish myself, but seeing the video afterwards instantly transported me back to that moment in time. It helped me remember my first 100 miles, and it was very, very uh, special to me. So you know, when I actually start crewing other people, I start doing that for them. Over time, I collected a, a, a catalog of, of these uh, footage of the last mile, which I dubbed since the final mile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Dig deep, come on. This is it. This is it. The shooter's right here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.